Hello, good evening, good afternoon, good morning. <laughs> Hello, tell me here who is online with me. I am Professor Tarcísio. I teach people how to use Power BI, how to create amazing dashboards. Good evening, Quack. One of my students. Okay, I suppose you are in Asia, right? Yeah, okay. Hello, Ernest. Hello, Monica. Hello, RTJ. Hello, Muntuzi. Yes, Arthur. Hello, Mohamed. Good evening. Okay, so you must know me from preview courses you or you you are enrolled in the complete course of power bi the career boost with power bi yes and for tonight uh i have a very special uh, special class okay uh, let me explain more to you so let's recap here the methodology that I follow to teach Power BI. Uh, first, make yourself comfortable, okay? This is going to be a very long class. You do not need to uh, watch everything and try to do everything right now, okay? First, you're going to watch, all right? Pay attention. I know as it's going to be long, it's already late in Asia. Uh, many people may watch the, the rest of the class on another day. I know that. Okay. But, uh, the main purpose here is first for you to watch. And then in a second time, this video will be available for you to imitate me. Okay. You can download the files that I will use right now. And later you can, uh, do it by yourself by imitating, uh, everything that I'm doing here. And in a third time. That is the, the time that you will learn for real, okay? And then you can try by yourself without uh, following the step-by-step -step from the video, okay? And uh, that's when you will learn for real. All right, many people from South Africa. Hello, I'm happy to see you guys, really happy. I see, I'm reading some familiar names here. Okay, and uh, let's talk about the materials that we are going to use. As you know, uh, I, uh, as we have here in the chat, I have students from my complete course and we have uh, free students, let's say. So who is enrolled in my complete course will receive the databases. And also if you are not enrolled, you will receive the databases as well for you to practice. And uh, you also receive the backgrounds, the PNG files, okay, to use in the dashboard that is going to make the dashboard should look more professional, to look more beautiful. And uh, only the students enrolled in the complete course will receive the editable PowerPoint with uh, the backgrounds. Okay, so you will receive this file that I created here on PowerPoint. Let me show you. Uh, here is the file with all the, 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 the backgrounds. Okay, and then Later, you can change my logo, change anything that you want to use uh, in your portfolio, to use in your company, okay? Uh, and also, if you are enrolled, you will receive uh, the Power BI file, the file, final file that we are going to do tonight, okay? So you can download this later on Hotmart that you have access. And for the free students, you can uh, download this. I will leave the link here uh, in the video description after this class ends okay after the class ends i will update the the link in the description so you can download i i'm not uploading the file right now because i want you to first watch me and pay attention here okay well uh let's talk more about the uh the the, the framework the step by step uh you must be familiar how a power bi project works uh, how uh, i structure it and I usually separate it into the external part and the Power BI itself, okay? So uh, the first part, the external, we have the databases. We are going to check which databases we have for working tonight in a minute, 
And we are going to start by doing the ETL, okay, which is the foundation of the project, the foundation of this house, uh, making this analogy. Okay, uh, and uh, later we, we will check how we will build the data module. We will load many tables into this Power BI project. So we will see how these data are related to each other. Uh, and we will create the measures. Tonight, we are going to deep dive in the measures. We will have many things to learn about DAX and we will explore, explore uh, a lot uh, about tables, okay? This will be really interesting. And later, we create the visualization uh, using all the measures uh, that we have created, okay? And at the end, we finally published the project, but we are not publishing the, it's not the focus of this video. You can watch another video in my channel uh, that I teach you how to create an account and how to publish this dashboard on the web, okay? So that's the framework that I use in my company. And let's start this accounting dashboard. So uh, the analysis goal, we are working for Exodus Coffee Co. Okay, uh, this is a company that sells coffee and we are accounting analysts and we need to create a balance sheet to consolidate the main financial uh, indicators. Okay, so let's check here, uh, what do we have? We, we need to consolidate the balance sheet, the periods should be selected on an annual basis, okay? And we have to inform in a clear way the results of the period, okay? And we have to plot in a bridge chart the main indicators, all right? So for tonight, I have prepared a few examples. Let me open, uh, let's start and I will show you. Uh, well, first, this is the one of the folders that you uh, receive, okay? Uh, here in the zip file that will be available uh, for you to download, you can uh, see there is a database folder and assets, okay? Databases here, we have all the files for loading into Power BI and here in the assets we have the the backgrounds that we have and also the the theme on the on Power BI that we will use that uh, this will save a lot of time okay so uh, first let me introduce you let me give you the idea uh, of what we are going to accomplish let me go back to the home so like this is the the first page of this report that we are going to build the, the accounting report and then we have the profit and loss the balance sheet and the cash flow okay so let's open here the profit and loss and here first on the profit and loss we have a vision of the the table okay in this table uh we have here also the option to see a bridge that's uh, in our business case. And here we have the main indicators for us, okay? So we know the gross revenue versus the budget. It is slightly above the, the budget. Uh, the, the net revenue, we have the contribution margin. We have the net profit and the percentage of the net profit in relation to the gross revenue, okay? So that's how uh we we measure if the business is healthy or not okay uh yeah so we, we are going to learn how to create this table just by the look uh <laughs> you can guess that it is uh simple but it's not <laughs> it's not simple to build this type of table okay uh so for example you can drill down here uh the gross revenue and then you can see uh the amount of the revenue comes from each of type of uh, product. For example, uh, Ethiopian, Colombian coffee, Brazilian coffee, and so on. Okay, and then you can drill down and uh, see uh, more details about this profit and loss statement. Okay, this is really useful. Many, many companies, actually all the companies on, on earth should have a report like this. Okay, just imagine now the potential of your application uh, of a project like this. Okay, uh, if you agree with me or if you don't, please uh, tell me here in the chat. <laughs> uh, uh, Joseph, uh, about uh, market analysis and fintech analysis, uh, it's not on my radar, uh, the, these topics, but in the future, yeah, I guess we can do this. 
Okay, if you are enrolled in our complete course, let's talk more about this. Okay. <clears throat> and I also want to remind you guys, always uh, click in the uh, live button that is right beside the pause button. Uh, and then you'll be sure that you are watching this class live. Okay. Uh, because sometimes there is a delay between uh, what I'm saying and what, and what you are seeing. Okay. Okay. So a few, a few people agree with me, the potential, uh, potential of application of this type of dashboard is huge. Okay. So that's why we are here. <clears throat> so, yeah. Uh, and then we are going to learn how to create the DAX for this, because this is not simple. We're going to deep dive and we are going to learn how to format this. So for example, here you can see uh the the gross revenue in comparison with uh the budget was 0.6 uh, percent higher uh and so on okay and we will also learn how to uh change this comparison here for example i have selected here last year instead of the budget and now it's showing here in this column the values from the last year instead of the budget okay and then we can compare here versus the last year so yeah uh we are going to uh continue let's see and what else we have we have the balance sheet the balance sheet here uh this is like a separate file it uh it's not correlated to the numbers that we have here in the profit and loss why Bec uh, because of uh learning purpose i will show you a different type of creating this type of tables, okay? I will create uh, an, another type of hierarchy to, to create this balance sheet, okay? That is a, that will be a different method than uh, we will use to create this profit and loss. So that's why uh, it's a different database from uh, the two of them uh, for you to explore this second method. And uh, we have the third page that is the cash flow, okay? The cash flow we have here the bank account balance and the net cash flow, uh, which is the, let's say the, the balance, the variation that we have uh, for each month here in the period. Okay. And then we can uh, see what is the result. And also we have here the detail uh, by outflow and by inflow. Okay. So we can separate and check what was out and what was in, uh, uh, in the bank account. Okay. <clears throat> yes, Kaya, uh, the recording will be available. Yeah. So let's start. Uh, let's start. Let me open here the files that we have here, the assets, uh, folder that you will download. You can see that there are these PNG files for you to use. Okay. But if you are a student from the complete course, you can, uh, edit this on PowerPoint. And also I have some icons and we have here the file for the theme that is going to be important. And we have here the, the folder with the database and in, on this database, we are going to, uh, let me see, we're going to have this balance sheet a folder. There is uh, three files. There are three files. Uh, and then we have one for each year for the balance sheet. And we have the budget. Three, uh, also three files regarding the budget that we will use for the profit and loss and the transactions that uh, will be the base for the profit and loss statement as well. Okay. The budget and the transactions files, they are in the same format. So let me show you, I will open here the budget. <clears throat> And then we will open the transactions. Yeah, so here is the budget. So in the budget file, we have a date. We have here the detail for each, uh, each month. Let's see. Actually, we have a budget for each day. Okay. For each day of the, of the year. Yeah. And we have here one column with the account code. That is the column that we are going to link uh to another table and we will see uh what is this account about okay so if this is a uh, this account is related to sales or if it's a cost and so on 
And uh, how is like in reality? In reality, you will probably have like a system, uh, an ERP. You could get these uh, values from SAP, for example. And you will have many accounts registered on this SAP or on this system. And uh, you will have the list, the list of these codes and the accounts. So you can see which uh, is the expenditure for each one, okay? And here, here we have a transaction type. Uh, this does not concern to us right now, but uh, if it's a neg negative, it's debit, or if it's positive, it's going to be a credit. And here we have a column with the value, okay? We have many, many, many records. We have many records. Like in this year of 2022, we have one uh, 118,000, okay, rows. And we are going to have uh, more or less the same amount in the other file of 2023. And in 2024, we have values until February, okay? We are in 2024, it's not complete. So it's until February. And the transaction file is going to follow the same standard. And let's see here another file that we have. Uh, yes, Johannes, uh, the file you will have, you can download after this class ends. I will update the link in the description, okay? I do not want you to download this right now. And uh, here we have the account that I told you, okay? So for example, the account code 219 is about sales uh, from Brazilian coffee. Say, and 221, uh, sales Ethiopian coffee, okay? And so on. And we have here also uh, regarding costs. Regarding the costs, we have salaries, we have vacation, and so on, okay? So we have here uh, the full list, of, your, of accounts that we have in our system, let's say. Let's say that we are using SAP in this case. Uh, and the last file that we need to check is what I call the tables mask. What do you mean by table mask, Tarcisio? The table mask is like, <clears throat> let me show you. Uh, here on Power BI, uh, how are we supposed to leave like this uh, order, this, this table in this order, you know? We need to create a separate table with this order, with these titles, because on SAP, we don't have the structure like this. So we are going to structure the way that we want to show, we want to visualize in this file. So here we have <clears throat> the, the Excel file. Uh, yes, Iris, the recorded uh, will be available. Uh, so here we have the, the group code. So uh, first of all, let's go back here, one file. Let me show you what is the group code PL, profit and loss. Let's see. <clears throat> uh, so you can see, for example, that here we have the sales. We have the sales and uh, also the services, the freight is a, a, a form of income, okay, for the company. So all of them belong to the group code number one, okay? They belong to the group one uh, code number one. And this other table is saying that uh, this group code number one represents the gross revenue, okay? So here we have the gross revenue. And uh, so these five rows here, these five accounts belong to the gross revenue. And then we have the second, let's see, the second group code. Uh, this is related to taxes, VAT, discounts, and sales devolution. Uh, so uh, we see that this, this, this is usually a negative value, right? So let's see here in the second, uh, the second is about deductions from gross revenue, okay? So you can see that these group codes, uh, they are uh, making sense here when you see, when you read the, the accounts here, okay? So here is like a, a, resu a resume, uh, resume of the, the accounts that we have here, all right? We are consolidating here the final form, the final layout that uh, this is going to result in a table like this. Okay, and later when you uh, drill down on Power BI, you can see uh, the the accounts that belong to to this group code. Okay.
<clears throat> yes. Uh, okay. Thank you, Amaka, for the feedback. I will use more the Zoom feature. Yeah. So t tell me here in the chat uh, from uh, zero to ten if you are with me or not. I know that m more than a hundred people have entered in the last minutes, so it's really important to to have clear these concepts. Okay. So you understood that we have. Uh, a few databases for the transactions and the budget that we are going to use to create this profit and loss statement, right? And later we will load a different uh, set of files for the balance sheet. Yeah, they are a different file for learning purpose because I structured in a different way, okay? Perfect, everybody's here with me. So let's start on Power BI. Uh, yeah, the introduction was long because I know this is not uh, an easy tutorial. Okay. Uh, if this was easy, <laughs> uh, this would be uh, fast, but you, you know that this is going to be long and a lot of new content uh, here. Okay, so let's go. Uh, let me open Power BI to begin with. So here I have a blank file on Power BI. The first thing I want to do is to load the, the file. So let's uh, load first here. I will click create, uh, I will click here on Excel workbook and uh, let's open the folder with the databases. Uh, let's start with the table masks. Yeah, table mask. Oh, one thing that I forgot to mention was we have two masks. Okay. We have two tables. Uh, the first one that I showed, uh, was the profit and loss. And we have also the second one for the balance. Okay. And this we will see in the second half of this class. Okay. For now, we are going to load the first one from profit, profit and loss. I will click here, select this one and I will transform data. Okay, so let's open Power Query. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, all right, so here we have the first query is profit and loss. I will rename this. Uh, let's call this, uh, this will be like the mask, okay? The mask of uh, profit and loss. And this is going to be, uh, Let's call profit and loss mask. Okay. I will call for now profit and loss uh, mask. And let's check here. We have the code. It's a number, whole number. Management account is a text. Account is a text. Type is a text. And we have a, a column called calculated. Why do we have this? Because here uh, you can see that we have zeros and one. Okay, zeros and one. Why? Because you can see that, for example, for calculating the gross revenue, we won't need to uh, build any DAX for this. Okay, you, uh, it's just a matter of establishing a relationship between the tables and Power BI will find the value based on the group code. You will see. And uh, we have the net revenue. And why we need to calculate the net revenue? because the net revenue is not like a, a role on SAP. We do not have an account called uh, net revenue. We are going to calculate the net revenue based on the previous, on the previous uh, roles, okay? So for example, we are going to uh, uh, sum the gross revenue. We are going to sum uh the gross revenue plus the deductions okay and as the deduction is a negative value uh this will be uh the, the, uh, deducted okay automatically and then with that we are going to calculate the net revenue okay so every row that we have here with one uh it means that is a calculation uh of the the call the rows above all right yeah uh so let's see let's see we, we we do not need to uh apply anything right now we are going to use this with dax okay 
So for now, we need to keep this is going to be really important, this column. And when you are going to build your own uh, profit and loss or balance sheet in, from, for your company, I recommend you to think from this perspective. OK, you will understand this in a minute. OK, so this table is looking good. All right. And uh, let me see. Uh, Monica is asking for zooming. Uh, here is not uh, is not enough. Uh, so let's go for the the next one. We have here the accounts. Let's load the accounts. So I will click here, new source and from Excel workbook. So let's open here, accounts. Yeah. Uh, and another reminder, please set the YouTube quality to at least 720 pixels, okay? At least. So you can see, well, uh, the resolution is good. It will be good enough for you to read, okay? All right, so here, uh, the accounts. So let's load this sheet one the sheet one. Okay, in this sheet one, we have here the uh, accounts, accounts, uh, profit and loss, I will call just PL. Okay, yeah, let's uh, use PL. All right, it's going to be shorter. PL accounts. <clears throat> uh, and Okay, we have here the list with all the group codes, uh, account codes, the account. Okay, so it's looking all right. So let's go for the next one. The next file that we want to load is the transactions and the budget. Okay, so let's start with the transactions. And for doing that, we need to get the, the, this data from a folder. So I will copy this folder path. Okay, and let's click here, new source from uh, more. Let's see here the list. We have folder, okay? Uh, yeah, connect. Let's connect from this folder. I will paste the value. Let's hit OK. And yeah, it has three files. Let's transform data. Now we're going to extract the, the values from these three files, okay? In this case, uh, we have many unnecessary columns here. So I will select uh, let me see. Using shift key, if you select first, for example, extension, and you go until the end, and you select, you, you can click shift in your keyboard, shift, and click in the last one. And then you can delete, okay? You can delete, and a new step, the removed columns, uh, is added here, all right? Uh, okay, so let me see. Uh, Let me see, I will add here a new column. We are going to add a custom column. That is this option right here, okay? For bringing the Excel content. And we are going to type this piece of code, which is excel.workbook, okay? Oops, it's twice, Excel. And then we are going to add the content, okay? like this you you will need to type this okay to extract to get the content from these files all right what happens if there are duplicate uh, rows in the files from the folder if there are duplicate rows uh for power bi there is no problem there there won't uh appear any error, okay? Uh, for us, the data may not be uh, good, okay? It, uh, if it's duplicated, we're going to count it twice or more, and uh, the values are not going to be corrected. So you can use later uh, uh, the option to uh, remove duplicates, okay? Here in the Home tab, uh, after loading, you can uh, come here in the home tab. Let me see. There is an option to remove duplicates. Oh, you can use right in the in the column. Yeah, you can right click with the mouse. Okay, in the column, in a given 
column that you want and then you can remove let me see remove duplicates okay yeah so you can remove them <clears throat> all right so here we have the three files and here we have the tables this is the new column that we have added okay uh, and okay let's click here in this arrow all right in this arrow you can see that is a different arrow you can click here and let's click OK to bring all this new metadata. OK, this is some type of metadata. And now you can see that we have here the uh, sheet one, uh, sheet one uh, per file. You can see, for example, here 2022, we have two roles now. We have two roles. One of them is regarding something that we do not want. OK. We do not want this because we only want the sheet. Okay, we will only want the sheet. So let's filter here the sheet to get only the sheets with data. Okay, all right. So now uh, let's delete a few columns here that we do not need. So, for example, this custom item we do not need, the kind hidden. Uh, we only need the data. Okay, now if you click here, you can see that the, the data is stored in this column, okay? We are going to see how to deploy this. Okay, so this content uh, column we do not need. The custom name is the uh, spreadsheet name, uh, the workbook name we do not need. Uh, we only have the file name now and the custom data. So yeah, let's click here and let's uh, deploy let's click OK and now we have loaded we have brought all this data okay we have brought all this data from the the three files so let's roll down uh, actually uh, we are not going to reach the second file because we have more than 100,000 rows okay and Power BI as you can see here is loading uh, the top 1,000 rows we can load the entire data set, but <laughs> this will take a while to load and to every every step that we apply here, Power BI is going to process this uh, transformation, loading everything. So uh, this is going to take longer and we don't want that. OK, let's assume the data is correct and uh, let's let's use here the good sense. All right. Uh, so what else do we need? Well, we do not need this column with the the name. Okay, so I, just to be sure, I will click here in the, to filter this column with the file name, and then you can see, yeah, we have here the three of them. So it's looking okay. I will simply delete this column. All right, there's no problem. And what else do we need? We need to promote these headers, right? I will promote, but remember that uh, as we have uh, appended three files here in the future we will bring more for example uh, this header is repeating itself somewhere down below when the next file starts okay uh, so if uh, for example here let's let's assume all three files have the same uh, header name okay the headers are equal the column names are equal so I will copy this and let's filter, for example, transaction type. Uh, I will apply here a filter that is equal to transaction type. And somewhere down below, we will find these other two uh, rows here. OK, and this will uh, have an error in the other columns because this is not the data that we are supposed to, to use. OK, so. We need to filter them, okay, to clean this uh, data. And instead of equals, uh, I will use does not equal, okay? Does not equal transaction type. And then we are going to clean those two rows that we have down below somewhere at some point, okay? Now our code uh, here, I assume that is clean, okay? <laughs> and let's decide Let's decide the the name of this query, the name of this query. Are you guys familiar with fact and dimension tables? Tell me here, uh, what do you think? The trans transactions 
the transactions record is a fact or a, a dimension table? Let me know here in the comments. So now I want to do the same thing to, into, to apply the same transformation into the budget files. Yes, exactly. Crystal and Quack, yes. Yes, I add. Yes, uh, it's a fact. So let's call this fact transactions, okay? And these other two, two, two queries that we have here, they are dimension, okay? Dimension tables. Uh, so let's call this dim PL max, and these are dimension PL accounts, okay? And for the budget, I will duplicate the 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 transactions that we have done here and what is the only difference the only difference is the folder name right as we have here the transactions folder and the budget folder okay this is uh, one difference uh let's see what else so i will duplicate i will right click here duplicate this one and let's call this fact budget okay yeah Okay, so let's start by changing the source. I will click here in the applied steps. Let's change the, the folder path. Okay, let me change here instead of transactions. This is the budget. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so here you can see that we have budget, the budget files. Let's go step by step. Okay, we added the custom uh, column. We have expanded, all right, just like in the other example. We have filtered. We have filtered here only the, the sheet type, okay, sheet kind. Uh, we have removed the other columns, expanded the data, and yeah, it's looking good. And instead of the transactions, it's loading the budget, okay? Removed this column promoted headers, we changed the type, we filtered the roles. Yeah, it's uh, everything looking good, okay? So yeah, it's done. And to, to begin this project, the, the, these are the, the files that we are going to need for now, okay? Uh, let me see, we have here another one for the balance sheet. I will not load them right now because that's uh, already a lot of tables for us to, to manage. Let's finish this profit and loss first, okay? So I will close and apply. I will close and apply. <clears throat> yes, uh, many, many people got this fact in dimension tables, right? That's good. Uh, I see new names here. I, I, I am reading a few names that I, I don't know, and I'm happy to, to see that. <laughs> Okay, uh, so, <clears throat> all right, let's go for the, the first thing that is the model view, right? And Power BI is excellent. Uh, I, we love Power BI, and Power BI uh, has connected, has established the relationship here between these tables, right? So let's check. Uh, the fact, we have here the two fact tables. Let's leave, let's leave the dimension tables above, okay, and the fact below. Uh, <clears throat> let's check the dimension with the accounts, okay? We have the, the accounts and we have the mask, the mask table that we will use to show the data. Let's see the relationships. We have here the account code with the fact transactions, the account code, okay? So this is all right, this is all right. And here we have the account code with the account code in the fact budget as well. So this is all right, yeah? We have the accounts explaining what, uh, what are the accounts from the budget and what are the accounts from the transaction. And also we have a, another relationship here uh, with the accounts with the mask. So we can consolidate this data based on the group code, okay? on the group code. All right, so Tarcisio, let's see uh, the numbers. Yes, now 
we, we are supposed to start building the measures. So let's start with checking the numbers, checking the uh, values that we have loaded. Uh, if I bring, I drag and drop here the, oops, in the values, the sum of the value from the transaction, uh, we have this, the value of 3,000, uh, 380,000, okay, around 380,000. So let's see the, how this is divided into the accounts. <clears throat> All right, so this is the uh, division by the accounts. Okay, uh, and let's remind ourselves, what do we need? We need to consolidate based on this uh, first, the group code and later the accounts, okay? So let's bring the, uh, let's create another table here right beside, and then we can compare. Let me zoom it. Yeah, so if it's better for you to read. Uh, we have here, instead of the accounts, we have the group code. Uh, no, actually, let's bring the management account. Because the code is a uh, is a number, and we do not, we we are human beings. We we uh, we prefer text. Yeah. So <clears throat> yeah, you can see that for example here we have amortization. It's the same value as here, right? Look, thirty seven thousand. Uh, what else? We have costs. We have costs here from of goods and service, and this is probably a sum of these guys, right? This is probably. This could uh, actually include another row here, like depreciation that I'm not seeing right now. Uh, let's see another one, depreciation. Depreciation, we have here 3,000, uh, and we have the same value here, all right. So yeah, you can see that the values, they, they match, they match. But the problem is that when we bring this uh, management account from this mask table, we are not seeing the entire data set, right? So if we sum these rows, the value, the total is not like this. The total is this, but considering everything, uh, this is not all right. right. So let me show you once again, the fact, uh, I'm sorry, the mask. So here in the mask, you have seen that Power BI is showing only, is showing only uh, these uh, these rows, which the calculated value is zero. Let's compare. For example, here you have gross revenue, taxes and fees, operational expenses. So here uh, we have gross revenue, the deductions, uh, costs. It's only the uh, they calculated automatic, automatically, okay? <clears throat> so that's our job now to create the DEX measure for calculating this, all right? So let's start. Uh, let me see. You can see that these values are calculated here on the left, right? And let's, let's use this to, to compare later. Uh, the gross revenue here is, let me see, uh, the gross revenue. Yeah, this is going to be a sum of many values. So uh, I will create, oh, one very important thing that I forgot. I forgot to create the D calendar. I forgot to create the D calendar. Let's create this D calendar table real quick. Uh, I will open here the table view and I will add a new, let me see a new, table, a new table. Here in the table tools, new table. And in this new table, I will call it the calendar, okay? And we are going to call a function called calendar. And uh, the start date will be the minimum value, minimum value of the fact transactions, uh, transaction date. 
what is the column called? Transaction date, exactly. Okay, and then close parentheses. And with that, we have the minimum, which is the earliest, the first date of the data set. Okay, and we are going to use here semicolon. In your computer, if your country standard is different, this could be a comma instead of a semicolon. Okay, uh, you can check this by uh, seeing the when you start uh, typing the measure. Uh, you can see, for example, here Power BI shows that is a, a semicolon. Okay, and the second, what is the 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 latest date is the max uh, of the same column. Okay, from the fact, fact transaction, transaction date. Okay, and I will close the parentheses of the max function and I will close again for the calendar function. Awesome, awesome. So we have here the date. All right, let me format this into a short date format. And now let's uh, create a few columns here to create other visualizations. So for example, let's create the year column that is going to be the D calendar date dot year. Okay. You can simply type this and we are going to generate this new new uh, column. Okay. Let's uh, create another one for the month number that is going to be the D calendar date dot uh, month number. Okay. Yeah, so let's create another one that is going to be the month name, the month, okay? The calendar date dot uh, month, just month. And then it brings the month, all right? Yeah, uh, this is useful when you are building visualizations, uh, charts in the future, and this could be really useful. Okay, so now we have created the D calendar. Oh, we, we haven't established the relationship of the D calendar. Uh, we have here the transaction date with the transaction date, uh, with the date, I'm sorry. And we also have the transaction date from transactions with this date, all right? Now we have the complete D calendar. I, I have typed it wrong calendar yeah now it's correct <clears throat> all right uh, so what we have done here until now we have uh, done the ETL we have loaded the the files we have established the connection uh, of the data model and we are starting to explore the data okay so uh, tell me here yes or not if you are with me are you with me? Yes or not? Now we are going to start building the DAX, okay? And now th things are going to get more advanced, more interesting. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so let's start. For doing this, I like to click here to cr enter new data manually, okay? Uh, doesn't matter the name of the column i will call this zero measures okay just to create a new uh section for the measures we are going to store all the measures here inside okay this will keep the project more uh, well organized uh here uh, let's create the first measure the first measure is going to be the actual value the actual totals that we have uh, for calculating here in this table, okay? So uh, let me call this actual. And this will be simply, let's start from basics, like a sum of the effect transactions value, okay? Let's start from basic. Uh, you can see I am adding this, uh, I have added this measure into the table and <clears throat> it's showing the same result as this automatic sum of value that we have uh, dragged and dropped here. Okay, it's the same. 
Yeah, because we are using the same function here. Okay. And what is the difference now, Tarcizio? Now we are going to see the uh, context of each row. Okay. So for uh, doing this, we are going to create a calculate function. Let's call the calculate function. It, this is the most important function of Power BI. Okay. Uh, this is really important for you to, uh, to understand how it works. It's used for filtering the data. Just imagine. Uh, you have the sum that is summing the entire column of our data set. But in this context here, we need to apply this filter, for example. Let's sum only the amortization. Uh, and it's missing a few rows. Uh, that we need to calculate and we are going to use it for calculating these fields. Okay. So, uh, we are going to use the sum in the calculate function and semicolon. And now everything that I will type here will be considered as a filter. Okay. Uh, so yeah, for filtering this, do you remember that we have that index column? We have the index column. So uh I, I cannot show you right now yeah let let me show you let me show you i will close this calculate this will not change anything but let me show you uh as we are calculating the mask table for profit and loss we have here the calculated column okay and we need to calculate these fields that we have one and you remember that we have the group code here as an index so for example we can use the the following logic to calculate the net revenue this is going to be a sum of everything of everything that comes be, uh, before the number three okay that's a very good logic to follow so for example we are going to sum uh, one uh, plus two, the, no, the row number one plus two. Uh, let's see, for example, another case uh, for the contribution margin. The contribution margin is, it needs to be calculated. And it, this is going to be the uh, net revenue or one plus two uh, plus the number four plus the index number four and then we have the contribution margin let's do another one uh, oh this percentage here that we have we're going to calculate later okay let's skip this one let's go for the EBITDA the EBITDA we have here uh, let me use another color uh, this is going to be the sum of the contribution margin with the operational expenses okay and we have the EBITDA uh, and so on until the uh, the last one that is the net profit okay this will follow the same logic all right so let's see now <clears throat> how we apply this logic here we are going to need to filter everything because when we have a table like this power bi is filtering uh, oops, it's, uh, let me delete this. Power BI is filtering the management account for each row. And we are going to uh, tell Power BI, no, now you are not going to filter as you wish. Now you are going to filter as I want. Okay, so let's use here a semicolon, shift enter to skip one row. And let's, uh, let's use the filter. Let's use the filter function and uh, for doing the this filter we're going to use the entire uh the entire mask table so i'm going to call all the dimension of the mask table okay yeah and what do we need to consider we want to consider uh power bi to sum all the rows that are above it means that the index should be less 
than the index that I have in this context. So for example, uh, if I am uh, in the row number third, no, number three, I'm sorry, that is the, 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 the net revenue. In the net revenue, we need to sum the first and the second, okay? So we need to first discover what is the row uh, that we are, and we need to ask to Power BI to sum the rows that are above. So let's use the, uh, the what is the code name here? It's the group code, yeah, group code, dimension PL mask, and then the, the group code should be less than uh, the selected the selected value that we have right now. That is the group code that we are. Okay, so let me skip one row, close the filter and close the calculate functions. And let's see, wow. Now you can see that our table here is different. Let me delete this old one. Our table now <clears throat> is looking different. We have many rows that you can see that with the uh, prior uh, DAX, only with the sum, it was not showing values, but now we have values for the contribution margin, the net profit, although this is wrong because these are percentages, okay? In a minute, we are going to fix this. But let, let's check, let's do the math. So for example, uh, let me order this table. I want to order the management account, this column here. I want to sort by the group code. Yeah, I want to sort by the group code. Now it's looking, yeah, looking uh, all right. So let's see. The first value, the first value, we have the gross revenue. The gross revenue, we have uh, around 8 million. 8 million and the deductions are around 2.6 million. Yes, and the, the net revenue, will be the sum of these two. So let's check 8442258 uh, 2627909987. Yeah, all right. So we can see that the net revenue now is correct. Okay. But, but these other values here are not correct. You can see that now Power BI is not calculating correctly for uh, this one because it's summing only the, the rows above, all right? Yeah, so a uh, very simple way to fix this, I think, is to change here to um, less than or equal. Yeah, now it's correct. Uh, less than or equal? No, actually it's not. It's not correct because when we get to the deductions, uh, we need to show the, the, the value of deductions and not uh, to sum right away with the value from above, right? So now we have a new problem. We have a new problem. We need to filter this table uh, based on that column, if it's calculated or not, okay? Uh, Tell me here if you are with me or not. Tell me here, tell me here, because this is going to be, uh, this, this is going to get more advanced as we, we talk, okay? We are going to add, start adding new code into these decks. Great, great. And if you have questions, you can send here. Uh, yeah, the, the method for learning this, uh, first of all, first of all, the purpose of this live class is exactly uh, this, because you can see that I am building the logic as I go. Uh, from the start, when we have the spreadsheets, I cannot figure out everything right away. 
I need to build the logic as I go. So for example, we have built this logic to calculate only the, uh, the, the, the fields that we needed, or that's the first step. Now we are going to continue uh, building this logic until we get to this point. Okay, so hold on. Uh, yeah. And the problem that we have right now <clears throat> is uh, that we have uh, solved the how to sum these two columns, these two rows, but when it's not supposed to be calculated, it should not be calculated. Okay, so let's change this in the code. And uh, for doing this, uh, the best practice is to use the switch, the switch function. So let's use, oops, the switch. How it works? We are going to check row by row what is the value and if it's supposed to be calculated or not. Okay, and if it's not supposed to be calculated, we are not going to calculate. We are not going to use this uh, formula that we, this function that we have created. Uh, and if it's supposed to be calculated by us, uh, so we are going to use this one. Okay. <clears throat> so let's uh, start here. First of all, in the switch, we we are looking for the true value. So we type true. Uh, the true function and I shift the enter to skip another row and the first condition the first condition is going to be uh, I, I will check if it's supposed to be calculated or not so I will use the same function that we have used here I will use the selected value I will check if the selected value of calculated column is equal to uh, one, if it's equal to one, it means that uh, we need to calculate this, okay? So, uh, semicolon and the code that comes after the semicolon uh, is when this condition is met, okay? So, yeah, uh, let me close the calculate here. All right. And uh, let's close the calculate. And after the calculate uh, ends, this condition ends as well. So for example, now when the calculated field is not one, it could be any number, this thing that we type here will happen. So I, for example, I will type here uh, four times uh, two, okay? I will close the switch. Let's see the rows that we we are going to have this value <clears throat> so yeah you can see uh the first two rows they are not supposed to be calculated remember the gross revenue and deductions here they are zero zero uh, only the net revenue is one so they are the fourth uh twos the two 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 okay so they are entering here the last condition Okay, uh, and when it's one, we calculate. Okay, so we calculate the contribution margin, we calculate the EBITDA, and finally the net profit, right? Uh, <clears throat> what else? Okay, but instead of showing this two, 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 we need to calculate uh, just the sum, okay? The sum of F transactions. Uh, where is it? Fact transactions, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so let's check now. Uh, yeah, now it's looking correct. We have 8 million, it's uh, equal to this one, equal to this one, and now we calculated, we calculated the percentage we are going to fix in a minute. The operational expenses is all right, calculated, uh, it's not calculated. It's the same, the same, the same, the same, and the net profit is being calculated, okay? So now we have solved. 
we have solved it, solved it. and with this i i uh, i think you you must have learned uh many many new content already right <clears throat> and now it's a matter of uh doing by yourself copying what i'm doing here and doing by yourself later and then you will learn okay at the at the beginning uh first you may encounter a few errors with the syntax but uh it's part of the process that's how i learned it as well okay yeah uh, how do we know the selected value of group code in calculation yes this selected value is going to be uh one different value value for each row okay so we are preparing the code uh so for example if i bring here the calculated let me bring calculated <clears throat> the calculated column to the yeah to here <clears throat> you can see which of them are uh calculated or not right so here we have the net revenue is one so when the net revenue i'm sorry when the calculated is one in the case of the net revenue this condition is met so we are going to calculate we are going to apply this filter here okay that's how it works <clears throat> uh, what are the major syntax of the calculation uh i didn't understand what you mean okay so what else we need now to calculate the percentage the percentage is not right so how we are going to do this we have uh we have two ways i think we can select <clears throat> based here on the type if it's a pct right it's a percentage uh yeah we have this uh, possibility or we can simply type the management account name okay uh, in this case I, I believe that is going to be better because to calculate the percentage of net profit is going to be the net profit divided by the gross revenue and this contribution margin percentage is different it's going to be the contribution margin divided by the revenue so uh as they have a different formula i i will prefer to distinguish them by the name okay so let's do this the let's do this here on the code once again uh let's skip this uh row let's send the sum below i will comment this code just for now uh let's um, let's imagine what is the condition to calculate the this row here of the contribution margin the contribution margin we are going to need to type all right so that's the management account so let's uh use this formula here the actually it's the selected uh, value of the management account okay it's equal to the percentage now i have to type exactly as it is contribution margin contribution margin okay if this is the value the selected value the contribution margin we are going to uh perform this division all right and what is this division this division is going to be uh, the contribution margin by the gross revenue okay so how do we get these values how do we get first of all let's see if we can get the contribution margin value actually for now we are getting this exact number right we are getting this exact number so we can use the same formula the same calculate dex that we have here okay so i will copy this one and uh how we are supposed to find 
the gross revenue the gross revenue so i know the gross revenue is the first code the first in the index you know it's the gross here the, it's the first one so i will force power bi to get the value of the row number one okay so i will use the same logic but here instead of uh using yeah let's do the, the division first let's call the the divide function okay we're going to divide first the the value of the the contribution margin okay that is this one let's uh semi put a semicolon and now by which value we want to divide is by the gross revenue which is the same function but instead of the group code uh, is the selected value is going to be equal to one okay so let me finish the divide function i will add another uh, semicolon with a zero if there isn't any error here it will result in a zero okay and another uh, parenthesis to close this divide right so this is the condition that we have created here the contribution margin yeah and at the end let me come back with the sum the, the general sum for the other fields <clears throat> all right uh well this didn't change anything okay let me see if i have uh typed correctly contribution margin the man management account management account yeah this one is okay let me type let me see if i type this correctly well uh, in this case you you see i have built like a very long code for calculating this specific row and nothing has happened here uh and i need to debug this so i will cut i will cut this divide that i have created i will simply put here a five okay let's see uh, if this condition is being found <clears throat> no it's not being found there is no five here okay so that's the number one thing that we need to fix this condition is not all right uh uh let me see i i think a contribution let, guys uh, help me here let me see if you can uh, spot any any mistake the management account equals to the contribution margin instead of the selected value let's use the max let's check if this is going to be it's going to work no neither okay uh, the selected let me see uh, i will copy and paste just to avoid any any problems copy let's open the dex code i will paste here oops <laughs> it has pasted everything let me open a notepad and yeah here it is contribution margin yeah it's written exactly like this mm. Uh, instead of the contribution margin, we can use here also the the index. Okay, let's let's change this and use the index. Let's try with another option. Here, the contribution margin, the index is the number six. Okay, so let me type here the number six. Instead of management account, I will use the group code equals to six. Let's see. Mm, neither. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know why. I know why. Let me come back to the management account. Look, uh, one thing that happens with the, the switch function is if this first condition is met, Power BI is going to abort the rest of the process and will accept the solution. So if this one is not uh, being uh, executed, it's very probable that uh, this one is met first. So let's change this order. Let's change this order. Let's change this. I will send here uh, after the true, I will put the condition of the contribution margin. And uh, because this is like a, a specific condition, okay, a specific condition. And the others, uh, the calculated one, uh, this, is, this is going to happen uh, many times. And also in that row, this happens. So that's why it was not entering, okay, that condition. And now you can see that the contribution margin is here. The contribution margin is here and 0 0.14. This is a percentage. So we need to format this into a percentage. Okay, so let me zoom out. You can see that the code is starting to get longer, more fun. <laughs> and I, I see here an, a comment from Angel. Hello, Angel. Uh, this is a matter of practice, okay? For the first time, if I have seen this in the first time, I would be lost too. This in a second time, you are going to download the materials and you try by yourself, okay? So let's uh, carry on here. The contribution margin, we need to format. So this divide result, I will format as a percentage. Format function, okay? Format function here before the divide. And at the end of the divide, let me skip one row. At the end of the divide, I will uh, add here a semicolon and let's format this as a percentage. Let me see like this. <clears throat> and voila, now it's formatted as a percentage. Okay, different from the other rows. And now everything is looking correct. The values uh, that are not supposed to be calculated are not calculated. We are calculating only them, but we still need to do this for the net profit, the percentage. Okay, to do this, I will use the same logic. I will copy and paste this one. I will, let's comment this uh, code, right? Here, uh, find the row for the percentage contribution margin and calculate it by dividing by the revenue, the gross revenue, okay? And now, <clears throat> We are going to find the row for the percentage of net uh, net revenue and divide by the value of gross revenue. Okay, so let me paste here the same code that we have done for the contribution margin, which is the, uh, the percentage uh, net profit. Actually, it's net profit. Here is net profit. Okay. And what is going to be the difference? Well, this, uh, this value here is going to be the same logic. We are going to get the selected group code, which is the index. In this case, will be 14, 13, I don't know, I don't remember. And it's going to be divided by the group code number one. That is the same, okay? Yeah, uh, thinking from this perspective, 
Yeah, this this could be only one condition. Yeah, this could be only one condition. At, at the end of the day, the formula was the same. Yeah. <clears throat> and it is equal to 4.5. Let's calculate. Let's do the math. Let's check if these values are right. So if we have here the net profit, which is 384.018.94 divided by 8,442,558. We have 4.5% exactly. Yeah, it, this is true. And also we have here uh, the contribution margin. Let's check. This is 1191608.13 divided by 8,442,58. And it's 14.1%. Okay? So, <clears throat> yeah. One question. Uh, would, what would be an alternative syntax if we had more than two percentage to calculate. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, in this case that we have done, I have just realized that this formula are this, is the same for both of them. So I will cut, I will cut one of them. Okay, let me cut one of them. And we are going to add this other condition into the first one. So I'm going to show you how it's going to look like. Uh, the first one that we have is to, is for the contribution margin. And then we had, we add here a pipe pipe and we paste the other condition that we had. That is the selected value is equal to net profit is going to uh, use the same formula. Okay. And here, uh, we are going to calculate <clears throat> the rows that are supposed to be calculated, which uh, value, uh, which are equal to one. Okay. And the last one, the last sum, uh, calculate the standard rows okay <clears throat> we look for a syntax calling the type column uh, percentage yes it could be uh, an option aya but uh, pay attention if the formula is going to be the same but that's one option that could be one option too yeah in this case i could even have used this uh, suggestion of yours Yes, uh, we can. We could have used it. So, for example, uh, if the type is equal to percentage PCT, we are going to apply this formula here. Yeah, that's another another condition. Well done. <clears throat> uh, in our case here, I used the selected value for uh, both of the management accounts. Okay, and now we have calculated. We have calculated. If you have stayed until this point, congratulations. You have a lot of power of will for learning this. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> uh, so let's carry on. Uh, and what else? Uh, you can see now I will delete this sum of value because it's old news. Let's concentrate on this. This is the, the DAX that we are building. Uh, and it's looking correct. Uh, we do not need this total row. Let me uh, no. Let's let's leave like this because in a minute we are going to use yeah. <clears throat> All right, but the second step for to accomplish this is uh, to have the accounts inside to have the accounts inside the the the, the management account that we have here. <clears throat> All right, so I will drag and drop here. Let me get the accounts. Accounts. Where is the accounts? So here is the mask. Okay, this is the table as we want to see. And uh, we have the accounts table. Okay, and here we have the details. So, for example, we can see how much is regarding the sales from each product and so on. 
Uh, in this case, we are going to bring this column, the co account column, okay? So let me drag and drop from the uh, PL, PL accounts here below. So now we can see, for example, the gross revenue <clears throat> and the detail by each uh, uh, source of revenue. Really nice. The deductions we have also here, the discounts, how much is from taxes, from sales evolution, VAT, and so on. Okay. And if you sum them, it's going to be equal to this row here. All right. But, <clears throat> but uh, Power BI is sweet, but it sometimes gets hard. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. The net revenue, when we uh, drill through the net revenue, uh, all these rows are uh, being exhibited once again. And we don't need to see them once again. We know that uh, all of the columns, uh, the rows before are part of the net revenue, okay? If you see, for example, we are listing the, the rows here you will see that they are being repeated here, okay? Inside the net revenue. And uh, how we can do this? This is going to be a trick, a logic trick I'm going to teach you. Let's see. Thinking from the perspective of the context, thinking from the, con the perspective of the, of the context, uh, what we are seeing here, what we are seeing here when we have the gross revenue remember i will uh, call here the calculated column so you can see the minimum yeah you can see when uh, the calculated column is zero we we have values to show to display right we have values because we are calculating them from the accounts that we have in the SAP. And when we have the net, re net revenue, for example, that is one value that I have calculated, uh, we are not supposed to show the accounts because we have just uh, calculated, okay? We are, not, we are not supposed to show the accounts again. So based on this, based on this we can we can figure out one logic here let me see uh, we are going to calculate this only for uh the opposite of this one, uh, let me show you. We have calculated the selected value equals to one. So let's build the opposite. Let's build the calculated value equals to zero, okay? So let's uh, fix this by creating another condition. Only one cal calculated field equals to zero. Let's see what's, what's going to change here. Uh, yeah, in this case, it didn't change anything because uh, these are being calculated before. Yeah. So after this, I will create another else condition that is going to be the blank. Uh, and now let's see what is blank here. And nothing changed. All right. <laughs> Nothing changed as I as I wanted. Okay, let's see. Uh, we're going to call uh, another DAX function for doing this, I think. We are going to check if the account is in scope. There is this very useful function. Let me try this. Uh, if. If, um, let me see, we are calculating rows 
when it's not needed to be calculated. Uh, when, let me see. Yeah, when the calculated equals to one, that is this scenario that we have right here, <clears throat> we will also check if the if the account is in scope let's try this is in scope i will add another another condition to this so it's going to be the selected value calculated equal to one and the selected uh oops i'm sorry is in scope we're going to check if this column is in the scope of this calculation and the column is going to be the account this is going to be the management account yeah that we actually the one that we are using is the account only yeah and if we use the code like this this is not going to change anything yet oh actually change it you can see uh but you can see that uh we have no values now for the net revenue and it's wrong it's wrong so it's the opposite so if it's not in the scope of the accounts let's see and voila now we are not seeing anything when we drill down the net revenue now we are not seeing anything so let's see for example another example EBITDA EBITDA is also not showing anything when I try to drill down why because I used this function that is going to check if in this row the account is in that scope and when we look for for example the the account regarding the account regarding the EBITDA the account account regarding the net, rev rev net revenue, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. So that's why it's not going to calculate the, the value. That's not, that's what we want. Okay. And now it's not going to calculate guys. I know this code here. It's very advanced. Okay. But practice, practice this, uh, it's just a matter of practice. Okay. And I chose to do this live to invite all of you to uh, be part of this logic uh, building that I'm uh, doing right now. You can see uh, how I think when I start to build this. Because if I deliver for you this entire code ready, you will not understand anything. And you will never, if you try to understand this by yourself uh, with the code uh ready okay so let's build the logic together okay and uh let's see now the result let me see the percentage the percentage oh look the percentage is also uh showing values when we drill down and this is not uh what we want we don't want to calculate the percentage of not net profit for uh, each of these rows and we are going to apply the same condition the this and not in a scope the account okay in this is going to be in the first condition that we have here okay and what how we are going to structure <clears throat> the first step of this i will put inside parentheses these first two conditions because they are an an or condition okay it's a uh, contribution or net profit okay and after this we add the end because we are saying that power bi should have should get at least one of these right and this is this one the second condition is mandatory okay <clears throat> yeah and now the net profit is also hidden okay the net profit the percentage and the total and the taxes let's see the taxes are here all right the amortization all right depreciation all right the operational expenses 
All right, uh, here in extra salaries, we don't have any value. Okay. Uh, the contribution margin, it's all right. The, the costs, costs of goods, perfect. Okay, so now we have our table. Let's start uh, checking here what else. Uh, so we, we have done the hardest part the hardest part we have accomplished it okay in around one hour and a half yes congratulations guys we have more than 100 people online paying attention i know that's not easy and we have calculated the actual value now it's time to uh bring in the budget uh calculating the difference between them and uh detailing by ear okay so let's do this let's do this let's fix this visualization uh let me hide these filters pain uh yeah and to start doing this i will already add here the background let's ma start making these reports to look beautiful right i will <clears throat> add here another page and in the canvas background i will add here another uh, an image and let's uh go to the assets and the first one the slide one is going to be the uh first one here the page let's call this cover or home this is the home the home page okay uh, <clears throat> uh power bi shows this message when we don't have anything here so let's add here a button uh here insert buttons blank button okay i will add here oops a blank button to the profit and loss page yeah profit and loss and another one to the balance sheet and another one to the cash flow i am controls uh, copying and pasting by control c control v okay let's turn off these uh borders it's ugly doesn't look good okay and let's link now the profit and loss is going to uh, have the action of the page navigation to the page one in the page one let's call this profit and loss okay this is going to be the profit and loss statement let's create the other two pages the second one is the balance sheet. The third one is going to be the uh, cash flow. Okay. And yeah, the background, oh, the buttons. Let's link the buttons. Balance sheet here, uh, page navigation, balance sheet. The cash flow, action, page navigation, cash flow. Okay. Yeah, profit and loss. Let's add the background here for the slide two, fit and transparency equals to zero, okay? <clears throat> Amazing, it's, now it's going to start to look cool, okay? Let's make this. Uh, you can see that all the table now is uh, De deployed is expanded okay i will uh contract this one yeah let's leave like this and uh let's go back here to the example so we have one first column with the actual and another one with the budget okay and the budget column changes the budget column changes based on this filter we if we want to compare by the last year or the budget okay tell me here in the chat if you know how to do this if you know how to do this filter to compare last year or budget in the same field <clears throat> uh yeah let's see who who knows uh to begin with I, I can add some filters here i will add a slicer i will position here on the left and let's bring the ears we want to see the uh, data uh 
per year. Okay, so I will drag and drop the year here. <clears throat> Let's format. I want this uh, like a vertical list. Yes. And we can disable multi select. I want, for example, to select like this. I do not want background. Turn off background here in the general tab, effects. And let's change the color, the, the font, font color to white. Yeah. The slicer header also white. Okay. And this is the ear. Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so far, so good. We have here the actual, I will call this ACT. Okay. And now let's create the second column. I think you guys uh, are not familiar with this other uh, very cool method of adding this dynamic column. That is the, uh, how can I see? Uh, what is the name? Let me see here in the modeling uh, parameter. We are going to add ne this new parameter, OK? So let's uh, actually first for doing this, we're going to need to create the uh, measures for the budget and for the previous year. OK, so let me see here first. Uh, we have done the actual. We have done the actual. And uh, now we are going to create the budget. We will create the budget. And what is the difference between actual and budget? Well, instead of calculating the sum of the fact transactions, we are going to calculate the sum from the fact budget. OK, that's the only difference. The structure is the same. <clears throat> OK, so I will copy this, this entire code. And let's create a new measure. Let's create a new measure. Uh, good question, Crystal. Uh, does the filter on the slicer apply to other pages? We are going to set up this, okay? I will show you in a minute. Uh, hold on. So let's call this new measure as budget. Okay, this is going to be the budget. And uh, instead of the fact transactions, we're going to choose the fact budget. I will select here the fact transactions and I will click. I'm sorry, I will type. I will press in the keyboard Control Shift L. Control Shift L. And Power BI is going to select at the same time all the occurrences of these texts across the code. And then I can type fact budget. And it's going to change in all of them. And I type enter. And now let's add this. And voila, we have the budget. <laughs> yes, productivity tips. OK. <clears throat> OK, and now uh, to calculate uh, the budget is Fine, we, we already have the, the logic. Uh, and for the, the last year, the actual of the last year, uh, how we can do this? We can use a very interesting function uh, from Power BI that is called same period last year. <laughs> it's very cool, this one. Uh, and let's create this other new measure then. This is going to be uh, actual last year. OK. And for doing this, we are going to calculate, use the calculate function. We are going to call the actual measure that we have calculated. Because in this measure, we have everything figured out. And Power BI is just going to play with the dates to calculate this, OK? So we are going to call this actual uh, semicolon shift enter to skip one row. And now I will call this same period last year function. 
and uh, it's going to ask us based on which dates. Uh, everything we are doing, we do based on the D calendar, okay? Because the D calendar is the dimension that uh, can uh, talk with all the tables that have the the date okay so we are going to use the d calendar date here and let's close this parenthesis and let's add here so for example <clears throat> i will select first 2022 uh let's check let's check how much we have here for 2022 uh gross revenue 3 million point six and net profit 189 and if i select 2023 here we have 3.6 million from last year and 189 from last year okay power bi is going to calculate the same value the same uh, conditions the same syntax but for the last year okay <clears throat> amazing isn't it how you uh, would you do this on excel <laughs> yeah <clears throat> okay uh but we are supposed to show only one of these two columns at the same time only one okay we are not supposed to show them together uh, so for doing this, let's create this new parameter. Uh, I will open here modeling, new parameter, and let's go for the <clears throat> fields, fields. This parameter I will call uh, comparison, okay, because we, uh, we want to compare uh it's either with the budget or the last year value so which values which fields uh do we want uh let's see here we are going to use uh the measure of the budget or the actual last year okay so we select both of them bo both of them and we also have the option here to add a slicer to this page. Let's create. Okay. So I will leave this slicer here. Uh, let me paste the format painter on this one. <clears throat> this is being called actual last year. Let's add just last year here it's going to look cooler shorter oh actually it didn't change over there let me change here back to actual last year let's find where i can change here uh let's go for the comparison uh here here you can see that power bi is going to create a new table okay that is going to be Actually, it's like uh, this parameter, a, a new uh, in, a virtual table, okay? And here we have the comparison. And if you click here, you see the this DAX, this measure that is being used. So we have here, for example, uh, when it's selected budget, it's going to call the measures, zero measures, that is this part here, the budget. And when it's actual last year, is going to call this measure here okay and they have an index this one has an index of zero and this has an index of one so let's change this text here let's see if it's going to change in the yeah change it in the slicer now it's shorter <clears throat> okay so now uh, you can see right i have changed it here the comparison here in the comparison table uh and yeah so let's select here only last year for example nothing changed yeah why because uh here we need to create now a measure to 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 bring 
the value if either of them uh, is selected we bring the uh, respective one okay uh, <clears throat> let me select actually i will uh, set up this to be single select we are going to select only one at a time okay and now i will create a new measure i will create a new measure and then i will see I will see, uh, let's call this comparison value. <clears throat> and then I will bring here, this is going to be a verification to check which one is selected, the budget or the last year. So let's check if the selected value of the comparison, right? Comparison. Uh, before, let me show you one thing. I will leave this as a zero. Let me show you one thing. I will open the table view. And here, when I open the, the parameter table, you can see that we have three columns that... Uh, oh, now, now we can see here because we are in the, in the table view. But if we are here, we cannot see them, okay? When we open them here in the table view, uh, <clears throat> you can see that we have uh, this comparison order. And when we select each of them, this value is going to be selected. So uh, for example, here we have the column comparison order. We are going to call this one to check the value. So follow me. If uh, the selected value of the comparison order uh equals to zero uh do you guys remember which one was the zero uh i think it's the budget so we uh use the budget value and if it's not zero we call the last year okay so now i will bring this column here Let's format this to currency. <clears throat> to format, you can click in the measure and click here in format currency. Okay, uh, zero decimal places. Yeah. Now you can see budget is selected here. We have four million point two, and here four million point two. If I change to last year, now we have. 3.6 here, 3.6 here. Okay, so now it's dynamic. This value is dynamic. All right, so I delete the other two and let's leave this as the, how can, uh, how can we call this? Budget, yeah. But uh, it would be nice to use like a, a dynamic. Yeah, a dynamic. Uh, I think I can drag and drop here. Let me see if I can, if I drag and drop this field. Yeah, yeah, now it's automatic. Now it's automatic. It's just a matter of uh, dragging and dropping. But why we, we did this, this other measure? Because this is going to be useful for calculating the, the difference between actual and the selected one. So let's see. So for example, here, uh, the comparison, let's say that I want to compare. Yeah, yeah, to, to, to make things clear, let's leave actual in comparison because now it's written everything, the entire text, budget in last year. Yeah, perfect. Now it's better. And uh, now we have to calculate the difference between them. Right, so let's add a new measure and let's call this diff actual versus comparison. Okay, and this is going to be the actual. Uh, let's do a division, divide the actual minus the, the comparison the comparison value. Look, why, why is important to build this separate measure? Because we can call it here, okay? And we are going to 
divide this by the comparison value. Okay, so let's see the result and let's check. This is a percentage, right? So let's drag and drop here. Oops, there is an error. Uh, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> cannot convert the value of this percentage because this percentage is being treated as a text. So let's change this. Let's change. Uh, we're going to uh, create a condition, right? <clears throat> if uh, the it could be actual, if the actual oops if the actual is number there is a function called is number okay if the actual is a number if this is true we are going to apply this division if it's not we are going to leave it uh, blank okay because there is no such a thing as a difference between these um, percentages here it doesn't make sense to calculate this and voila let's format this into a percentage as well and yeah let's check here if we uh, if we have the value right so let's calculate we have 4.2 million 396 divided by Actually, it's minus uh, two, four two four four two seventy point two divided by four two four four two seventy dot two. <clears throat> and yeah, the difference is point uh, sixty two percent. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. Okay, so tell me here in the chat if you understand the, the, this uh, trick of creating the parameter. And now we have this dynamic column. And with this, we can select if we want to compare the budget or the last year. Tell me here if you are enjoying this type of content because uh, this, I, I suppose, is not really open out there <laughs> like this. You are seeing the direct application. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't find smart narrative in my Power BI desktop. <clears throat> you couldn't find? Uh, is your version uh, from this year? I don't know. I, I have always seen this. <clears throat> Yes, a little bit challenging. Uh, yes, it is. I'm not going to lie. This is challenging. If you are going to try to do this dashboard, you're going to take hours. That's normal, completely fine. It's part of the process, OK? And the, the important thing is to try, right? Yes, thank you, Penelope. Uh, so let's, do, let's rename this uh, column here. The, Let's call this diff, diff, percentage diff, okay? <clears throat> and now let's add here a conditional formatting, okay? You can uh, click here in this arrow and click in conditional formatting icons. Let's make this dashboard better uh, visually. So we are going to create a rule uh, let's create some arrows. Let's use arrows. Let's see. We're going to need uh, two arrows only. If the value is below zero, uh, then is below zero. Let's put here below zero. Number is red. And if it's uh, higher or equal to zero as a number, and this is blank, this is a number. 
and it's going to be green, okay? Very simple, and okay. <clears throat> and that's it, all right? So we can even uh, drill down here, Brazilian coffee, for example, uh, way above the, the, the numbers from last year. So yeah, it was positive, 38% with this arrow, okay? Uh, let's see now where our company is not doing really well. Let's see taxes. Yeah, well, look, the taxes uh, are not doing really well. We had this. Uh, no, actually, this is a lie. This is a lie. Our our formula here is wrong. It must be wrong because <clears throat> the actual was uh, minus 21 minus 20, 21 and uh <clears throat> let me see and the budget was minus 30 so we we were uh better do you agree we were better <laughs> and yeah it's minus but it's uh let's say bigger than minus 30 so yeah this number here is not right let's change this uh uh, this division, right? Why this is wrong? Let me see. Uh, we have here the actual minus the comparison value. Uh, some, uh, yeah, when we, we have negative values, the, the number can can get lost you know so here we are supposed to use the absolute number you know we can use this function called abs and then we use the absolute number of the comparison value that's the value that we are uh dividing okay and then it's going to be all right let's check check, check another another uh role for example uh yeah, this one is okay. Depreciation, the contribution margin, okay. Costs, costs, uh, let's see. Yeah, the costs, yeah, we were uh, not very good with the costs, right? Uh, minus 5,000, uh, 500,000. And here it was supposed to be minus uh, 300. So yeah, <clears throat> now it's correct, okay? So remember to add the ABS to get the absolute number. Okay, so far so good. And what else do we need? We need to view this by each year. Okay, and then uh, I will open, I will select here the year from the D calendar. So we have here the D calendar year in the columns. Okay, so if I select now two years, uh, let me turn off the total column subtotals. Yeah, turn off and the row subtotals. Let's also turn off uh, the all. Oh, let's see. Yeah, because this total doesn't make sense. Let's turn off this total. It doesn't change it. It doesn't change. Okay, let's see. Uh, if I turn off the row subtotals, is going to turn off all the totals, and I do not want that. So I want to turn off the management account. No. Uh, yes, yes, I want to turn off. Yeah, it worked. And if uh, we tur uh, turn on the account, it's going to uh, sum the correct ones. Yeah, and going back here to the chart. Let's zoom for you guys. Uh, here, it's comparing with the last year. So in 2022, we didn't have data from last year. So there's no comparison. Let's select uh, 2024. So here we have 2024, 2023. And here we have the comparisons. OK. Yeah, this percentage is looking weird. This percentage is looking weird. We are going to fix this in a minute. So now we can compare the years and visually uh, see them at the same time, okay? And that's uh, pretty much 
how we have here. Here we also have the totals. Yeah, this is going to depend on who is analyzing, who wants uh, on uh, what you want to see. But I prefer to leave the totals here, okay, in the top, and I will show you how to do this. Uh, so yeah, let's first change this percentage here. This is in the actual. When we have here in the actual the the dot, let's change to zero. I think. Uh, yeah, now it's correct. If we change to zero, if you leave like this, it's going to show if it's a zero. It's going to show the the zero. Okay. And now it's looking okay. Yeah, so far so good. Now let's also format this uh, table with the colors. Let's see. Oh, one very important thing. I didn't load the theme. We have all the colors for this dashboard. So let me open here the view. Uh, and let's browse for themes. We already uh have here the the folder and let's double click let's select this one you will also receive this okay and this is ready to use okay nice so now we have uh let's change we have the colors in the color palette let's change here the the borders let's see yeah the border is blue i want this uh gold yeah looks more fancy yeah i like it okay and also the columns let's format here the row headers alignment no no not this one the column headers column headers header alignment center okay now it's better all right let's change this management account let's put a space between them yeah now it's looking all right let's see here let's drill up yeah all right so far so good uh and now it's time for the let's go back for the business case and let's check what is what we are missing we we have consolidated oh we have consolidated the profit and loss statement okay we are not yet in the balance sheet we are going to get there in a minute uh the periods should be selected on an annual basis. We have done this. Inform in a clear way the results of the period. So we are going to do this next when we are going to build the cards in place here. And we are going to plot in a bridge chart the main indicators. Let's go for this bridge chart, okay? For, <clears throat> for doing this, uh, Okay, we have one question, very important question. Why actual last year, 2024, uh, was not actual 2023? Good question. Uh, because here in 2024, we are in only uh, in, in March right now, but we have data only until uh, February. <clears throat> so it doesn't make sense to compare only two months with 12 months. So Power BI is comparing here, based on this uh, function, uh, the same period of the last year. So if we are, if we are comparing only the uh, two months of 2024, we will compare with the, the first two months of 2023 to be fair. Okay, tell me here if I uh, have explained it. Okay, so now let's go for the uh bridge bridge charge this is going to be really nice let's uh for doing this you will need to to download uh an extension okay uh we are going to use a simple waterfall chart for this so you you will need to log in into your account uh if you don't know if you don't have an account here in my youtube channel i have one video explaining how to do it and uh, here you will click on get more visuals okay let's get more visuals uh, i will select here the uh, simple waterfall yeah it's this one okay let's download this one
<clears throat> okay, so let me add this to the page. Yeah, and uh, how we are going to structure this? We are going to use these accounts that we have here. Okay, uh, the from the 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 accounts table, and we are going to bring the actual values. Okay, so let's do this. The account. Uh, let's check here. I want to show you one thing first. In the accounts, I have the the column called account and the short account. The short account I did exactly for this because uh, you can see that uh, here is uh, better for visualizing in a chart. Is uh, the name is shorter? Okay, you can do this. So let's bring the short account. Uh, and the values is the actual measure. And look, it's this beautiful chart that uh, doesn't tell anything. <laughs> yeah, let's fix this. Let's fix. Uh, let me see. We are going to use here. Uh, We are going to need to fixate what are the, the, the columns that we want, okay? Yeah, uh, because here we have all the accounts and yeah, actually we are supposed to use the short account from the other table, the mask. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I made a mistake. It's the account from the mask table, not this one. Uh, let me select here, short account, goodbye and come here the account yeah and yeah this doesn't tell anything yet so let's fix this you can see that we have the percentage of net profit the percentage of contribution margin that we are not going to use in this visual okay so i will open here the filter <clears throat> and the accounts i will filter this i will select all and unselect the first two of them okay yeah and now we are going to select which uh, of these accounts here that we have that we we establish like a, a base for this uh, bridge okay so the first one is going to be the gross revenue here in the format your visual we can define the pillars so <clears throat> let's define here the gross revenue is one pillar the second one is the net revenue. The net revenue is another pillar. The uh, contribution margin is another pillar. All the, the calculated uh, fields are the pillars, okay? EBITDA is the pillar. Uh, and the net profit. The net profit is also another pillar, okay? You can see that this order uh, is not looking good. So. Uh, we are going to order this based on the account, based on the account. <clears throat> it's beginning with taxes and going all the way to amortization. You can see that this is the alphabetical order. This is not the order that we want. We want the same order as this, okay? So <clears throat> we need to sort the, the table. Let's open the table view. This column here, the account column from the mask table, we will sort by the group code PL because here we have the order that we want. And yeah, okay. So now we have these pillars and let's see if it's looking all good. No, it's, it's looking kind of strange, yeah because it should uh, comes from the gross revenue. The gross revenue here is at the end. Let's change uh, where this is uh, starting. Let's change this order. Let's see. Oh yeah, the sort by uh, account, it's ascending instead of descending. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, uh, yeah, we are almost there. We are almost there. <clears throat> Actual by account. 
Okay, so we have here around 5 million of gross revenue. Mm, this is uh, rounding up. Yeah, I want to change this. Let's change these values. Labels, value format, none. Yeah, let's format this actual. Uh, this is a currency, okay? A currency with zero decimal places. Let's see how we have, yeah, 4.7. Okay, 4.7, uh, because you can see it's summing 4.2 plus 400 thousand from 2024 if we select here only 2023 4.2 and 4.2 okay yeah <clears throat> so here the values are matching all good and now it's a matter of formatting this beautiful chart let's uh, change here a couple of uh, options the y-axis the y-axis i want to turn off yeah i prefer to turn off the x x axis uh no grid lines no grid lines needed yeah <clears throat> okay uh yeah and i think we can make this larger yeah fit to to width and wrap text yeah perfect okay so let me see what else do we have oh we have a margin i think oh yeah it's all zero okay uh and we have here i think space to make this uh taller yeah like this okay uh yeah so far so good we have built the bridge we have built the bridge for the analysis so let's change the colors let's check uh we have blue this blue bar color the total let's leave the total like this uh gold fair favorable is green all right adverse yellow other uh, yeah i'm sorry red and other is yellow okay yeah uh and what else what if the total is blue like this yeah it's better okay <clears throat> okay okay uh yeah and the, this title we do not need we do not need let's turn off this title and that's it okay so we have done the bridge and we have here the chart uh, and now we're going to do a magic magic trick to create here two buttons like this let me show you so you can uh, show the the bridge or the table okay bridge or the table i'm going to teach you how to do this using the bookmark so let's create two buttons first and we are going to place them here <clears throat> insert buttons uh, blank blank button okay let's create two of them all right right here ctrl c ctrl v oops and now i have two the first one <clears throat> the first one will be uh the table okay so let's add here style text table and this is going to have a font white and the background uh fill this is going to be let me see the other is golden uh is going to be gold yeah like this <clears throat> with no border and let's add an icon you will have an icon in the folder that you will download okay uh so let's change here the icon for a custom custom one let's open here table table.svg okay this icon here and yeah 
it's looking good. Let's change the text here to uh, there is too much paddling. Yeah. This, like this zero, let's see. Yeah, now it's looking good for the table, right? Oh, and also let's change this shape. This shape is a rectangle. Let's change to rounded rectangle. Yeah, now it's looking good. And the other one is going to be the bridge, okay? The bridge. Uh, and the bridge is going to uh, be the custom icon from the bridge, waterfall bridge. Let's change here the fill color so we can see the fill color is going to be, let's see the dark blue, I think. Yeah, oh, we have a transparency here. Yeah, transparency. Let's change to zero. Yeah, now it's better. Okay. And the text font is white. Okay. Also, the shape format is a rounded rectangle. Perfect. Okay. So, the style is pretty much decided, formatted. Okay. Uh, and what else, Tarcisio? Yeah. Now it's uh, showing the bridge. Yes, the bridge. And let's change. I didn't like this gold. Uh, let's change this to feel more like, uh, mm, no, yeah, let's use the gray. Yeah. Gray, uh, uh, shade of gray. Okay. So now we have the bridge selected and, uh, we are going to create the the bookmark for saving this state. And then uh, when you select bridge, only shows the bridge. When you select table, you click on table in the table button. It's going to hide the, the bridge and show the table only. So for doing this, we're going to need uh, two uh, panes, the bookmarks and the selection pane here that you can enable on the view tab. Okay. Yeah, let's go. Uh, you can see here the list of the objects that we have on the page and the bookmark. Uh, the, the way that we are seeing right now is the way uh, that we want to see the bridge. So I will click here, add, and let's call this bridge on. Okay, right. And uh, for the, the table, for the table on, we are going to turn off the, uh, we are going to click here in the little eye. We're going to turn off the, the bridge. Okay. Let's call this bridge charge. Uh, and this one, let me see which one. This is the table off and this is the bridge on. I recommend you uh, to rename them. Okay. And, uh, okay. Let me see another thing. We are going to, now we are going to see the, the table as we want. Okay. So, uh, we need to change the, this, these buttons. So for doing this, we need to duplicate them. We're going to copy and paste. All right. And let's leave them in the same position. So you can see that now we have four buttons, four buttons. And I will call one br bridge off instead of on and table, table on instead of off. Okay. And this bridge off, I will uh, change the colors, right? I will just change the fill color to gray and this table I will the table on is the blue, blue one. Yeah. Perfect. So this is the state that we want to see uh, with the table. 
So I will create a new bookmark here. This is going to be called table on. And one very important thing, right click with your mouse and disable the update to data because this will not change the, the, the slicers, the, the filters, the highlight, and only the selected visuals. And for doing this, we need to select these visuals here. Let me see which one is the matrix. Yeah, this is the matrix. So we are going to select all of these visuals, select all of them, pressing Ctrl, and we are going to uh, yeah, select visuals and update. OK, you will click on update. And now we are going to save this state for this button. And now we, when we uh, turn off the bridge of table one, it will show these two buttons like this. And uh, we want to show the bridge chart as well and hide the matrix. So I will, once again, select all of them. And table on, I will, uh, actually, I'm sorry, bridge on, I will uh, unselect data and only select visuals. And update, OK? And update. And now let's check, let's test. If I click table on, table on. If I click bridge on, bridge on, OK? And now we need to add the action to the button. When the table is on, the bridge should have the action for the uh, bookmark. Bookmark, bridge on. So let's open. Control, press Control. When you are on Power BI Desktop and you want to click on a button, press Control. I click it and then we loaded the bridge on. And now the table. I need to add this function to uh, bookmark table on in the table when it's gray. OK, and I click, we go back to table on. All right, please be sure to leave like this. Unselect the data and select only uh, the selected visuals. OK, tell me here if you uh, like it, this part. I like this. I like to work with bookmarks a lot. It uh, creates a wow effect uh, for the user uh, and ma magnify the capacity of uh, bringing data and the ability to to show complementary information in the same page. Okay. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Penelope. Uh, Kinsley, no, <laughs> you, I am here to teach you. <laughs> I am here to, t to teach you. you. You have seen, I think, this tutorial on the bookmark uh, has last like uh, five, seven minutes. If you watch this again and try by yourself a couple of times, you will be a pro, okay? <laughs> yeah, you will. Okay, and we, we have done this using the bookmarks in the selection pane. Okay, now I can turn off them. Uh, we do not need them anymore. And we have created this amazing effect. Okay, I really like this. <clears throat> so now let's uh, go for the last part here of the profit and loss, which is this one, the top. In the top, <clears throat> we have the cards, so I will add a, the new card of Power BI. This new card is really powerful. I, I like it. This a lot. Uh, so in this card, we will bring the actual, okay, actual. <clears throat> and <clears throat> for uh, doing this actual, let's format this, uh, the layout. Yes, uh, this will be only one card. Uh, yeah, and call out values. The font size is too large. Let me see uh, uh, which font size. Uh, 12, maybe. OK, and uh, the label. We, we do not need the label, I think. Oh, no, we need, we need the label. Uh, so let's turn on the label we don't have in the background. <clears throat> uh, 
and uh, this could be below the value uh, with less space between them, like two pixels, uh, one pixel, zero, yeah, zero. And let's align this center where I can align this center. The series card, no background. No, let's turn off the background. No border as well. Uh, we do not need borders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now I want to to format this to center. Where is it? Layout. Yeah, vertical alignment. Yes, align baseline, match. Yeah, okay. Oh, look, the value is right here. Yeah, in this new card of uh, Power BI, you can see that there are many, many options for formatting, okay? Uh, even me, sometimes I, I, I don't remember where all of them are. It's just a matter of uh, looking for and expanding the, the menus, okay? It's okay. Uh, okay, so now we have here the actual. The actual. Yeah. Mm. Okay, it's, it's uh, showing as I want. Let me turn off here this background and yeah. Now I want to, to see, for example, here the first thing, the first, the first important thing is the gross revenue. So we want to present the gross revenue here. What we are supposed to do is to select this card and to filter, okay, based on the on the account, right? Let's bring the management account here and they will select the gross revenue. Yeah, around 4 million. But let's change this formatting, uh, this, these values. It's automatic. Where is it? Yeah, I told you that sometimes I can I can remember as well where exactly is the option to format. Call out values, actual. Yeah, the actual, where is the option to format the values? Where is it? Text auto, yeah. Okay, yeah, auto, yeah. But the values, oh, display units, yeah, none. I found it, poof. <laughs> <clears throat> and here it is, okay? Actual is like this and right below, uh, yeah, let's leave like 12, the font. Right below we have the reference label, right? We have the reference label. We can add a very cool feature here. Let's add one text comparing the, the, the actual with the comparison, uh, either uh, the last year or the budget, okay? So uh, let me see, we are going to create a new, a new measure, a new measure, and we are going to bring this measure here in the reference label. So let's call this text actual, versus uh, comparison, okay? And yeah, let's do this. So we're going to call the difference between actual and the comparison that we have already calculated previously, okay? And we are going to give a format for this, okay? So we uh, first, let's do this uh, by each part. Let's call the comparison value, okay? It's here. But if I want to format this, Power BI gives me special powers to use this format function. Format the comparison value, okay? 
uh, semicolon, and now we are going to tell Power BI which format we want, which is zero. Uh, as we are, we have percentage here. Okay, uh, the percentage of the difference between these two values. We're going to use. Uh, this is a percentage, right? Yeah, it is. So we are going to check here uh, what is the format for percentage, which is this one, right? And we can add a space and add here a special icon with Windows, the, the key in your keyboard, the key with the Windows on it, you know, plus dot. So Windows dot. You will open this box here. It's really cool. And then let me type green if it, uh, yeah, it's in Portuguese, I think, or Spanish. Uh, if you type green, for example, it will shows, uh, it will show green things. So for example, I want this green uh, dot. Okay, so uh, if you don't find by typing green, uh, you can just roll the list. So let's do this once again for the red. And uh, I will add here, for the red, which will be uh, minus 0.0%. And let's look for the red in, in Portuguese, I think. Yeah, vermelho. Okay, so now I have added this. If you uh, roll down the list, you can see there are many icons for you to add, okay? And then you can look for the, the green and the red dots and uh all right so let, that's it the format and we are going to call this here in the add label and here it is now it's too big it's too big for fitting in that space but we are going to fix this and now you can see text actual versus comparison is this number uh this giant number <laughs> it's uh oh yeah it's getting the the last year value mm, all right oh yeah uh, actually i linked the wrong measure here i linked the wrong measure it's not the comparison value it's the difference actual versus comparison i'm sorry yeah now it's correct 15.8 percent it's this value here that we want Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so let's uh, see here. We do not want the title or we want, yeah, we want. We want text actual versus comparison. Let's change this to custom. Yeah, let's change this. This is going to be like versus uh, comparison you know uh yeah yeah let's create another measure for this this is going to be the ver text versus text versus which you will be equal to uh versus and if it's uh let's see budget or last year, this is going to be based on the comparison. So let's call the comparison uh, value, the comparison value, no, the selected value of the comparison. Let's see what we will have as a result of this, uh, as this function of this text text versus okay <clears throat> a little error yeah i cannot link this one i think let's change uh yeah i think this text is too long, not good enough. Selected value, comparison, comparison fields. Yeah, this one is not looking the way I wanted. 
comparison budget or last year. How do I get this one? The comparison order is not. Yeah, let's check the comparison order because if it's one, if selected value comparison order is one, yeah, it's going to be uh, the last year. And if it's not, it's going to be the budget. Okay, let's simplify this text actual versus let's see. Okay, I, uh, I think this one, I need to use a different measure. And as we don't have more time for doing this, I will just erase, let's use a standard text. There's no problem, field name. Yeah, text actual versus, uh, let's see. Text, text versus as it was, custom. And I will use just versus. Uh, if it was last year or the budget, how can I get this? We are going to, we, we can come back to this later uh, if we have more time, okay? I don't want to waste more time on this, but let's, let's leave like empty. Yeah, it's going to be better without text. And then we know that it's, 15.8% positive. Yeah, it's enough for now. The value, okay. And the let's turn off this background. Let's turn off this background. The divider and yeah, now it's way better. And the value, let's see if we can center, make align this center. Divider, value, title, yeah. Where is it? Uh, low. Yeah, this, this menu, this new menu that they created, it has so many options that even uh, sometimes I can get lost here. <laughs> the background, the divider, no, we do not want divider, yeah. the actual, yeah, the value, the detail, no, yeah, never mind. I will position this right here, okay, and let's see if it's going to fit. No, we need to move this up. This font size is too big, it's too large, so let's change. Let me see here in the other file if I can, I can figure out where is the, how to format the alignment because I'm not finding right now. Oh yeah. I, I will copy and paste from uh, the other, try to use the same formatting option. Yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> okay, well, never mind. Let me come back here and I will leave this as, as a working progress for now. Okay, and later we can come back if we have time and we fix this. But the, the goal here is to leave like this, you know, to leave the values here and in the bottom we we can compare and format like this all right so yeah to not lose time uh looking for this feature my advice for you now is just to control c control v and then it's just a matter of changing the filters okay just changing the filters here 
uh, as we, for example, in the second position, we want the net revenue. Here we want the net revenue. The third one, we want the contribution margin. The fourth one, we want the EBITDA. Fourth one, we want the EBITDA. And the last one, we want the net profit. Okay, net profit. <clears throat> All right, and uh, you can see, so for example, here is not doing really well. 35, yeah, the EBITDA versus the last year is not doing well, but in comparison with the budget, yeah, it's doing really well. Okay, uh, another thing that I have realized this formatting has two decimal places. So let's change the budget, uh, the column. Let's change here, specific column, the budget to display units, none, zero, zero decimal places. Now they are equal. Okay, now the table is looking good. And here in the top, uh, I wanted to highlight here in the golden part, the percentage okay the final percentage of the net profit which is very important okay so here <clears throat> is the percentage of the net profit which is 3.8 okay and th in this one uh we oh actually in this case we should select here in the name uh, in the in the call out values, the title, the label, I think it's the name of the management account that we have selected. Okay, so let's click here. It's the in account. Yeah, it's in the account. Okay, so here we have the gross margin. Let me format here. Format Painter to the others. Yeah, and it's fixed. Okay. Now it's looking better. The net profit. Let's make this one larger. Gross revenue. Yeah. Now it's a matter of formatting, you know, changing the colors here. Uh, and this is up to you. You can change later. Uh, and the, 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 question, the question with the, this little guy here, uh, Angel, uh, has helped me here. Let's see in the layout tab. Yeah, reference label in the layout tab. Where is it? Yes, layout. Mm. Oh, let's see. Oh, layout arrangement rows horizontal. Perfect, perfect. Thank you very much for helping me, Angel. Thank you, thank you. Uh, very, a uh, very qualified audience. <clears throat> and now let's use the format painter for the other fields. Yeah, and they are going to look the same. And <clears throat> let's see now. Uh, we can change this color of this font, okay, the callout value. And here to white uh, to become better for reading, okay. And this type of uh, changes. I will not do right now. You can do it later, okay, by yourself. But let's focus on the main points. With that, we have uh, finished the profit and loss, okay? We have finished it. And uh, let's see, uh, we, we can go for the balance sheet. So let's add here a new button, a uh, new button, a blank one for the balance sheet. And another one for the cash flow okay uh, the action is going to be page navigation cash flow style uh, no border balance sheet with a border no no border and the action this one sends to balance sheet yeah so let's go for the balance sheet 
In the balance sheet, I've told you that we had uh, a different format, okay? So let's open the, let's uh, get the data from the Excel workbook. This is going to be in the folder of databases. And inside the tables mask, we have another table with the mask for this uh, balance sheet, okay? Let's load, let's transform data first, let's check. <clears throat> okay, so here you can see that we have level zero, level one, two, three, and index, okay? We have a couple of empty rows, let's filter based on the index column, yeah. And you, you will see what is the purpose of loading this one. I wanted to load this new separate file for you to have a comparison with the, uh, the first way that we calculated the hierarchy and the second way we are going to calculate in a new way, okay? Uh, so here we have, for example, one column with each uh, step of this hierarchy and you will see how you can transform this on Power BI. Uh, here on Power Query, you can see that uh, the uh, text is not uh, clear and it's not clean. Let's uh, trim this text, okay? So I will select all of these columns, the level 0 to level 3, and I will uh, transform and I will trim, okay? Let's clean them and that's, uh, and that's enough. And this we are going to call the dimension yeah dimension uh balance sheet mask okay so this will be bs mask to follow the same standard that we have created <clears throat> okay so now let's load the other uh the other three files from the balance sheet from the folder okay so let's load from this folder here, the balance sheet folder. <clears throat> These files have a different format than the other uh, budget and transactions files, okay? So we are supposed to do this from zero. Uh, so I will clean a couple of columns that we are not using, we don't, we don't need. Uh, and let me add here a new column, a custom column, once again, that is going to be the excel.workbook. And we are going to call the content. Let's click OK. <clears throat> yeah, we hit, we have an error because I deleted the content in the last step. Yeah, I deleted the content. Now we have the table, all right? So you are supposed to leave the content and the table name in this step. Uh, here in the custom, let's bring all the five columns. Uh, and yeah, let's filter only the sheet, just like in the other one, the custom kind sheet, okay? Let's delete now the other columns that we do not need. Now we can delete the content. Uh, I will keep the name, okay? Let's select the three columns that we have in these files, and that's it. Now I, I want to check if we have loaded. Yeah, we have loaded the table, the, the balance sheet for the three years. I will delete the name as well, okay? To delete, just use the delete key in your keyboard. Very simple. <clears throat> and let's promote these headers, use first row as headers. Look, we have a, an error here, probably because of the, of the headers, right? So let's clear, let's clear the, the headers. Look, here. We couldn't parse the input provided as a date value and it's called date, yeah. So let's filter, date filter uh, equals date, okay. Oops, does not equal, yeah. 
So, no, it doesn't, it doesn't accept. Okay, so I have to apply this filter before transforming this into a date or, uh, yeah, it's the best option. So before transforming this into, uh, into a date, I will come here to the promoted headers and I will filter, okay? So let's select here, text filter does not equal to, let's insert and let's type date. So we will clean, uh, we will clear the date. Now you can see, I go back to the last step. It's all good and everything clean. And with this, we have the F balance sheet. Yeah, fact balance sheet. Okay. Yeah, <clears throat> so let's close and apply. And let's see now how we are going to structure this because this will be different from the profit and loss. With this, <clears throat> let's add the canvas background uh, in the assets table, slide three, fit and transparency zero. Okay, let's do the same for the cash flow as well. Slide four, fit, transparency zero. Okay, back to the balance sheet now. I will add a matrix, a matrix here, okay. And for the balance sheet, let's see the data that we have loaded. Let's see the data. <clears throat> for the balance sheet, actually, first, we have not established any connection or any relationship, right? So let's see, uh, look, Power BI already connected, connected them. So we have here index to index in in the dimension max, we have the index for each row. And in the balance sheet itself, we have the index for the record for each row. Okay, so let's open here for you to see the fact balance sheet. Let's change this date for a short date. <clears throat> yeah, we have the amount of this uh, transaction or this account. And we have the index that is going to be uh, explained by the dimension balance sheet. So for example, index one, it means uh, cash and cash equivalents. Uh, index two, it's about account receivable. Three, inventory and so on. And here you can see this type of hierarchy. <clears throat> for example, these four, first four rows belong to current assets. And the first eight rows belong to assets, okay? That's another form of uh, creating a hierarchy here on Power BI, all right? Uh, I think, in my opinion, yeah, this is the most uh, uh, simple, is the easiest one, okay? When you have each column with the, the, the levels and uh, this is going to be easy to visualize in a matrix, for example. So let's plot and you will see. Because now Power BI already recognized everything based on the index. Okay, this is really important. And uh, we, we can call the values from the fact table, from the balance sheet based on the index. And now we have the structure. Okay, so let's see here. Let's bring the uh, let's bring here the mask account. I'm sorry, the balance sheet uh, mask. And we have the level zero, we have the level one, and we put one below the other. You know, we have the level two and the level three. Okay, and we bring the values from the fact balance sheet. That's the table that we want. Oh, one thing very important I forgot is to establish the relationship between the date and the D calendar. Okay, that's one one thing. <clears throat> so we can filter the the table. <clears throat> All right, and uh, now let's see. Okay, uh, the assets. It's there. The value. Let's bring the values from. Yeah, it's the amount. And we bring the amount here. Let me format this as a currency. 
I will not create the measure. I will just drag and drop for you to see. And the columns will use the ear, okay? The ear. So now you can see if you click, if you hit plus, you will open the hierarchy and then you can start uh, digging down and uh, drilling down the, the table, okay? And seeing uh, the values for each of them, okay? This is very easy when you do not need to, to calculate. Uh, that is the opposite of the first case. We needed to calculate a few rows. And in this case, only a hierarchy solves the problem, okay? Tell me here uh, in the chat if you have understood this example from the balance sheet. And uh, answering the question from Crystal, if Crystal is still online, uh, you, you, we can uh, sync, synchronize these uh, filters. So for example, uh, if the year I want to apply the same filters in on all pages, I can co copy the filter, the, the slicer here on the first page, and then I can paste on the other page. And Power BI is going to ask me if I want to, uh, to sync the visuals, okay? And I will select sync, and now it's synchronized, all right? So if I change here, 2024, 2023, and yeah, and then I, I come back to the profit and loss page, it's synchronized, okay? Uh, it doesn't make any, uh, any sense to bring the comparison because the comparison here, uh, we, we do not have a budget for the balance sheet, okay? It's just a report of a fact, okay? It's just something that the company have, the company has. Okay, and answering uh, Ines' uh, question about the how long this video will be available, it will be available for a while, okay? You, you will have time to come back and watch this later, don't worry. Uh, the only difference between my uh, students and the free public is that the free students will receive also the, the Power BI file and the, the PowerPoint file to change the background, okay? And then you can uh use this in your portfolio all right <clears throat> thank you sean thank you very much and with that we have the uh the balance sheet very uh simplified okay when you have correctly structured the the hierarchy and then you build this table with the mask with the hierarchy you can bring this into a matrix and it's everything uh, set, all right? Uh, and with this, we have the assets that is uh, divided into current assets and non-current assets and the liabilities and equity, okay? And usually these two values here, they should be the same. They should be equal, okay? There is a little difference here in 2024, I believe, that's because the, the year didn't end. And this type of analysis companies uh, do when they close the year, right? Because there are many taxes uh, inside this that are calculated only when the year closes. So, uh, but when you, when you pick a, a, a given year to analyze, the, these two uh, roles, they should be, they are supposed to be equal, okay? That's one rule of accounting. If is there any accountant online here, uh, send me send me a message. Send me a hi. <laughs> All right. So now let's go for the cash flow. Let's go for the cash flow. <clears throat> uh, oh, one thing very important. Let me copy this style. Let me copy this style here uh, from the old the old table. Yeah. Now it's looking better, yeah. And this table is supposed to be drill, drilled down, okay? And the user to, uh, to check the, all the roles and, and so on, okay? So let's go for the cash flow. Uh, here in the cash flow, you will have uh, the chart with the, the expenditure, okay? We, we, we in a company, we have the inflow and the outflow, everything that comes in to, to the company regarding the, the revenue, regarding 
the sources of revenue, and we have the outflow regarding the costs, the taxes, and so on. Uh, <clears throat> for uh, doing this cash flow and for si simplifying the, 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 this learning process, we are going to use the, the same data from the profit and loss statement, but we will ignore the depreciation and the amortization, okay? Because the, this uh, doesn't make sense, it's not included in the cash flow, okay? These values. So we are going to get the values, uh, for example, the inflow values from the gross revenue, and uh, we will get the other costs to calculate the outflow, okay? So let's go for the cash flow. <clears throat> uh, do we have any accountant online here? Let me know. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so yeah, for, for doing the, the cash flow, I want to start with a uh, line and stack it, line and stack it, column chart. And let me see, for, for this one, we are going to use the, the inf let's separate the inflow and the outflow first, okay? Uh, and how we are going to do this? Let's simply uh, accept that every positive values that we have in the profit and loss are uh, sources of inflow, okay? Uh, and the negative values are sources of outflow, okay? So let's do, let's create two measures. Let's create, let's create one measure for, one measure for the inflow first, okay? In the inflow is going to be the calculate of the actual that we have done. And uh, we are going to apply a filter and we are going to see uh, if this value is um, uh, higher or below zero or less than zero. Let's see, we, when we calculate the actual, we are calculating from the fact table that is the fact transactions okay so let's call the fact transactions value and this value should be uh, equal uh, i'm sorry uh, higher than zero this will be the uh the inflow okay so i will drag and drop the inflow here <clears throat> Oh, uh, let's add the date into the X axis. Yeah, let's add the date and I will, oh, and also let me copy and paste the year filter, slicer, sync, yeah. Okay. I will select uh, only 2023, okay? No, 2022, better. Okay, I don't want the quarter. I will uh, delete the quarter. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, and with this, we have the inflow. For, uh, for each month, this amount of money uh, was uh, related to the, some type of revenue. Okay, and now let's do the same for the outflow. I will copy and create a new measure and paste the same code. And here, the difference will be that it's going to be the opposite. Oops, I forgot to change the name, this outflow. Okay. And yeah, now it's the outflow less than zero. And let's add this into the chart. Okay, so now you can see that we have both the inflow and the outflow in the chart for each month. If we go, if we drill up one level, we can see the value, the entire value for the year, okay? But that's not a cash flow yet, right? We, we, here we are seeing, uh, let's see. <clears throat> when we, uh, we are doing a cash flow, we have two options. <clears throat> the first option is to get the, the real values from the bank account, okay? You, you ask for a report uh, with the numbers from the bank account from, from the... Uh, the bank that your company has the account or has uh, many accounts, okay? This is one possibility. And the other one is, uh, this is the reality first, right? And the other one is to consider 
the transactions in the system. And I know, and a few accountants can uh, agree with me here online, uh, <clears throat> that sometimes there is a difference between the transactions that you have in the system, like we have here, and the actual uh, amount that you have in your bank account. Sometimes these values could be different, okay? So when you, you build this cash flow, uh, ask uh, if you are not the accountant, ask for the team if they want to see the real value from the bank or like the virtual value from the system, okay? I have done projects with both, of, both values uh, for the same company, but uh, they wanted to compare because sometimes there is a deviation between what is in the, the bank for real and what are the transactions on SAP. Okay, that's a fact. Uh, and <clears throat> so the example that we are doing here is uh, with the transactions, let's say from SAP, or it could be data from other system. And uh, this uh, is the amount of money that we, we have uh, coming and exiting and coming out of the company. But to calculate the cash flow, we need the starting point. So let's say, what is the value, how much uh, of money uh, we had at the beginning? So I can calculate how much money uh, we have in the, in the bank account. And for doing that, I will input this value here, okay? Uh, I will, uh, let's say, create, uh, bring this number from uh, the bank or any other source, and I will bring this picture, okay? This, uh, it's like a, a picture of, uh, the, of a given day. And from that day on, we will uh, calculate, we will sum with the values that we have in the transactions. So you will see. I will click here on enter data. And I will call this uh, bank account ba balance. Okay. <clears throat> and I will have uh, one column with the date. And the date will uh, will be like uh, first of uh, January of 2022. That is the first date that we have in our uh, model here. And the value, okay, the balance. And let's suppose that in that day we had two hundred thousand dollars, okay. And then uh, leave just like this uh, one row only with this record. And let's click load. Okay. Yes. Hello, Maureen. Hello, uh, M2Z. Yes. We have a few accountants here. Hello, Bonfas. Yeah. So. Uh, how can you get the Power BI file? The Power BI file will be available for the students enrolled in my complete course, okay? Uh, you will get the, if you are uh, a free student, you will get the databases and then you can follow the class and do it by yourself, all right? <clears throat> okay, so I loaded here this uh, small table, the bank account balance, okay? Uh, this, uh, to keep the standard, let's call this fact bank account balance okay just to keep the the standard uh <clears throat> all right so now we need to calculate uh what is the actual what is the actual balance based on this first value that we have and uh based on the the other uh transactions all right so we are going to need to create a new measure for for this uh, so let me, let me create here new measure. And for this, we are going to call this, uh, the bank account. Oops. Where is it? Let me create again, bank account. bank account balance okay we're going to call this measure bank account balance and this is going to be a calculate of the inflow 
plus the outflow, okay? The inflow that we ca calculated before plus the outflow plus the sum <clears throat> of this value that we have just created, which was in the fact bank account balance, okay? Which was exactly this field. We are going to calculate this <clears throat> uh, semicolon, and now we are going to uh, create a, a filter because oh, let's see the result. If I leave like this, uh, let me let me leave like this, so you will see the result. It's not what we wanted. Uh, so, for example, here uh, we have in the bank account. Uh, 389 so let's see here for each month let me plot this into a matrix i believe it will be better to visualize <clears throat> yeah uh, first to to explain better to you i will add a new measure with the difference actually with the sum of inflow and outflow and then you can see the difference so uh Total inflow outflow. Okay, this is going to be the inflow plus the outflow. And then I will bring this column here so you can see. So, for example, <clears throat> on January, the difference here is about $8,000, uh, $8.9. And the 200000 that we have plus this value, yes, is. It is 208,000, uh, yeah? It's correct. And here, when we have the second month of February, it's summing 20,000 to the 200. And it's not correct. It's supposed to sum 20,000, uh, 20, uh, 20, I'm sorry, to the 208, okay? You see that this is not correct. So that's what uh, the, uh, that's the 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 how can I say the context that I, I told you at the beginning of this class. We gotta pay attention with the the, the context, and that's all about this class was. All right. So let's go back to the bank account uh, DAX formula, and let's <clears throat> build this. Uh, we are going to need to add a filter for calculating this. And in this filter, you, you, you see that we have a problem with the, the date. We, we, we see, for example, if we are in February, in the context of February, I cannot see the value from January. And then I cannot sum. That's the problem. If I am in December, I cannot see the value from the previous months. So now we are going to force Power BI to calculate this. So we are going to filter all the D calendar date. That's the, uh, the table with the dates that we want to filter, okay? And for this, we are going to consider in this sum all the values that are previous to the specific to the selected value that we are calculating. So for example, if I am on March, I want to calculate all the previous values. I want the values from February and January as well. If I am on September, from September and before, okay? So that's the logic here. And for this, we are going to, as we have applied here, the all cleaning all the filters from the D calendar, uh, this means that we can see the entire table of the D calendar now, we are going to filter by ourselves. And then we are going to tell Power BI, look, I want to filter now. The D calendar date should be less uh, or equal. It should be less to the maximum of the uh, selected date that we have. So uh, in this context that we have here, okay? We are going to use this the max. I think the selected value here also also works. Okay, so let's let's test in a minute. So let's apply this step and let's see what has changed. <clears throat> Look, now we have twenty thousand plus 
208,000, it equals to 229,000. And it's correct now. Okay. Uh, let me do as I have mentioned it. I think the selected value here works the same way because the purpose, oh, didn't, it didn't. Yeah, in this case, you will uh, look for the maximum value of this row. So for example, what is the value that this is going to return? If we are in on March in this row and you use the max, it will return the uh, uh, 1st of March, okay? That's it. <clears throat> yeah, so guys, tell me here, tell me here in the chat your impressions. Yeah, tell me here, do you have any doubts related to this le uh, le less, less steps that I have applied? Tell me here, we have 100 people online. I want to see some interactions. <laughs> so now let's create the, the visuals for this, right? Uh, for, for this chart, I want to use the bank account balance. Okay, this will be the bank account balance. <clears throat> Let's uh, exhibit the data label. And in the line, I want to present the line, the difference, actually the total of inflow and outflow. So we can know uh, if there is one month that uh, the outflow was too large and it was negative, for example. Okay, well, in 2023, we didn't have <clears throat> two thousand twenty three, two thousand twenty four. Okay, yeah. Let let me add here in the chart. Mm, look, uh, I think it's not being filtered. Let's see the bank account balance. Yeah, there is one little detail here. The fact account balance, I forgot to make the relationship with the, the calendar, okay? <clears throat> now it's accurate, now it's correct. 2024, let's analyze 2023. I will drill down here, yeah. So you can see that there is uh, secondary axis. I don't want this. Look, this value is negative. It's totally, it's very weird. So let's turn off this secondary title and the values I don't want. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And the values, no. Now let's see here the data labels, the series labels. No, let's format the data labels. For the total inflow outflow, position auto value, I do not want any format. Let's format this as a currency, that's it. And I will also do this for the first one for the bank account balance, okay? Bank account balance, display units, none. And here as well as a currency, okay? <clears throat> yeah, and zero decimal places, of course, for both of them. Yeah. Okay, and now I want to, let's see, I want to add a tooltip, a tooltip. Let's go back here and I want to bring the outflow to the tooltip, outflow and the inflow. So when we pass the mouse over, we can see, uh, for example, uh, the bank account balance was about this value and we had 
this amount of inflow and this amount of outflow okay and also the the how can i say the total the total here the balance uh, it's it's called the net net cash flow right this this value here is called net cash flow The net cash flow was about nineteen thousand dollars. Okay, the variation in this month and so on. And now you can analyze this. And another thing uh, I would add, it's a matrix, a matrix here with all the accounts from the fact balance sheet. Let's see. Oh, I'm sorry, the, we are not in the balance sheet. We are in the getting the values from the profit and loss. Yeah, let's get from the profit and loss from the accounts. Yeah, from the accounts, we want the actual values. Oh, actually, let's bring the inflows. Yeah, inflow and another matrix with the outflow. Okay, so you can have a detail and check what are the most representative. Oh, and one thing very important, I forgot to filter here the amortization and depreciation that we should not consider for the cash flow. Okay, so uh, click in a blank space in a white area in the background and open the filter. And here we are going to bring the, let's see, the account the account and we are going to uh, unselect the amortization and the depreciation all right now the values are uh, most similar to reality okay because these values are not considered in the cash flow so now <clears throat> uh, we have here the more details about the uh, the inflow, you can have this idea on uh, the, the most representative uh, forms of, of revenue and the most representative, representative costs. And you can do this also by month. If you select a given month, for example, you can see here. Oh, look, let's see, for example, on uh, July. July was not a very good month. For the cash flow <clears throat> so let's see uh the costs with Col colombian coffee were very high no we have higher costs let me order this uh ethiopian coffee were was very expensive and also vat okay and and then you can start analyzing the data all right let me copy this format of uh matrix to here let's use the format painter and also in this this other one and we are almost there we are almost there if you have stayed here for three hours and <laughs> congratulations <laughs> yes the longest class i have lectured on power bi and i think this was totally worth yeah that that's a a very uh, advanced class, I think. So uh, I would give more tips on formatting this, okay? Let's turn off the values on Y axis. Uh, the month in the X axis, we don't need the title. In the <clears throat> legend, let's make line in markers, okay? Like this is better. And that's it. That's, I think I wouldn't change much. Okay, lines. Let's change to dash it. And it could be two pixels. <clears throat> Thank you, Penelope. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I would improve here the formatting to make everything to fit in one page. That's important. Okay, this title is totally unnecessary. Uh, okay, and the 
legend top center okay <clears throat> and now let's align these two tables and we can uh, come back to the first one <clears throat> uh, yeah let's add here the buttons right I will copy from the other page let's see in the profit and loss I have here uh, Angel, how did you get the active page navigation be to be highlighted? I created the uh, I created two buttons. Okay, uh, you you mean the table and the bridge, right? <clears throat> uh, I created these uh, two buttons for each state, for each uh, topic. I I, I mean. So if, for example, you are seeing the bridge, you are seeing the blue button of bridge and the gray button of table. If you, if you are seeing the table, now you will see the blue and the green, the gray one, that is the opposite, okay? There are four buttons. So let me copy these buttons here. Uh, this balance sheet button will become the profit and loss. And this profit and loss will become, oops, the home. Yeah, let me copy and paste. This is the home. Okay, so now the cash flow also has buttons. And this is the balance sheet button. Perfect. Okay. Uh, and one thing I, I still on you an explanation is on how to solve this text. Let's go go back here. Now we have time for this. In the uh, reference labels. Reference labels. We have here actual. We have here the label, the text. Let's add the title. In this title should be like 10. Yeah. And let's see if I can add a measure here with the text versus. What was the error first? I don't remember. The text first. Mm, it's not accepting. Mm. Let me see here one thing. The last year. Oh yeah, sure. Here it's supposed to be equal. If the comparison order is equal to one. Yeah, yeah, I found. Yeah, I found it. Okay, so let's try to add here the text and then I will explain you. Yeah, the text. Oh yeah, now it's working. Let's change for the last year. Yeah, like magic. Perfect. Now I, I will explain you. You will have to create this measure that is versus dot space and and we are going to check if the value, the selected value here, the comparison order is equal to one, just like we have done before. Uh, this could be equal to one or is zero. Okay, if it's zero, it's regarding the budget. And if it's not, it's the last year. And then uh, based on this, you will uh, complete the sentence. If it's versus the last year or versus the budget. So every time we change here, 
the slicer is going to change here. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So now here it is the it is the formula for you to copy. Okay. And I will let's say let's see if yeah it works if I paste this into the others. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, it's too small. Let's make the, them larger. So it's going to fit the width. Let's make them 175. And it's a matter of repositioning. Yeah. Yeah. OK, now it's a matter of repositioning. And we have all the indicators. OK, uh, now I will read a few questions that you may have here in the chat and consider this class as done. OK, that was a lot of content. Uh, deep dive in the measures, years of experience <laughs> to, to give this uh, class. Let's see. Uh, how did you get the active page navigation to be highlighted like cash flow? Oh, you are referring to the left panel. <clears throat> this is the, in the background, okay? On PowerPoint, I have prepared the, the background. So uh, you can see that here in the background, where is my mouse? Yeah, let me close this. Uh, it's here, okay? So here I have edited uh, everything to uh, bold and to not have background, you know? Everything is on the background. Thank you very much, very much, Timothy. Thank you very much. Uh, Crystal, have you ever... Uh, first, you have another question. Prof. I know this is a bit advanced question for this class, but maybe you can give me some pointers. My client wants to compare data for financial years from 1st April to 31 March. <clears throat> oh, I see. The ac accounting year in your company uh, ends on, on March. Uh, I, I see. Uh, when, when you have this type of uh, scenario, you will need to create a column on the D calendar that is going to be the index for you. So for example, uh, the mo uh, month of April will be considered as the first month of the year, correct? And then you will have this column with this index on the D calendar that we will have, for example, if it's Mar uh, April, it's equal to one. Uh, if it's May, it's the second, it's equals to two and so on, okay? And March will be the last month, the number 12, correct? Yeah, the, the, a few companies work with the accounting year from April to March. That's a fact that this can happen, okay? <clears throat> uh, another question. Uh, yes, Aya, it's uh, an image. And everything is set here, and you can download this from the the files. All right. So let me see. <clears throat> I will already send the link for you guys. You are here online, and I will update the description of this video when I close this class. Let me get the link, and you can download. Let me see. Uh, meanwhile, if you have another question, uh, try to ask, you can ask here, okay? Yeah, I'm sending the link here. Uh, I want to, to thank everybody for participating in this class. I know it was a very long one, 
uh, you you could have started from the middle. Uh, yeah, that doesn't matter. You can watch the class later again. Okay, and this will be available for you uh, for a while. Okay, this uh, I, I intend to make this type of lives more frequent frequent in the future with more business cases. And if you want to be invited, there is a link here in this uh, link that uh, I sent you. You can. Uh, confirm your registration for receiving these invitations, okay? Uh, thus, filtering the amortization and depreciation when working on the uh, part of cash flow affect the data in PL and balance sheet? <clears throat> uh, the answer is no, and why? Because let's uh, open here Power BI. Because <clears throat> when we have done here, I told you to click in a blank space, okay, in a white space here, and then open the filters pane. And here you have two categories of filters you have filters on this page and filters on all pages. We have applied only on this page, okay, so this is not going to affect the others. If you want to, uh you 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 need to move this filter to this field okay but we do not want we want this way okay <clears throat> yes and to the end crystal thank you very much <laughs> yeah thank you michael thank you <clears throat> yeah so if you open here the other pages there are no filters regarding the the depreciation and amortization okay Thank you, Monica. Thank you. Thank you. I really hope you guys have enjoyed. And I will also send you the link, this link, this link here for the, the final version that I have created. Okay. So you can uh, get the grasp of the, the final dashboard, how it looks like. And if you want to use, uh, let's see, where is the chat? Yeah, uh, you can access this example. Thank you, Penelope, once again, very supportive of you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Kyung. Yeah. Thank you, Ro Robio. Thank you, Edo. Thank you, Chibusu. Thank you, guys. Well, I will stay here for two or three more minutes okay answering questions and uh for the students enrolled in the complete course all these materials will be available on hotmart as well and the next the next one yeah the next one let's talk about the next one this will be uh about project management for civil construction a dashboard for project management for civil construction <clears throat> the link is not opening. Which link is not opening? <clears throat> Thank you, Gabor. Thank you, Pavel Novi. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so the next one will be about this dashboard for project management. I can give you uh, a little demo. Yeah, yeah. If you want to stay one or two minutes more. <clears throat> Let me see. <clears throat> the last link is not opening. Uh, the link regarding the the dashboard. Let me see. I think it's too long. Yeah, I think it's too long, and and uh, maybe YouTube is cutting the link. I don't know. I will create a a short a shortcut. Let me see.
Yeah, so this will be the dashboard for the next uh, class. This will be probably on next month, okay? <clears throat> uh, with a project portfolio to manage, and then we have total cost, the duration in days that we have uh, uh, taken, the workload in hours, and you can also make the comparison with the baseline that is decided when you start the project or with the forecast that you adjust uh, during the project. And you have also how to calculate the S-curve that is really important. You have the budget uh, per manager and you have the Gantt chart for manager, okay? Uh, <clears throat> and you can click on one specific project to see the details. Uh, not on the 13th, uh, not the 13th. What about the 13th will be uh, uh, the live Q&A, okay, Angel? And then you can bring the questions on Zoom. This is a private meeting, not on YouTube. Uh, and this will be regarding your personal doubts and everybody that is enrolled in the complete course, okay? But uh, regarding here, the, this is the project detail, okay? That you will learn in the next uh, session. And then you will learn how to add images, how to add this Gantt chart. And here you will also have the Gantt or the table view, okay? Yeah, uh, I like it. This one, this one will be shorter, okay? Not four hours of class. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's going to be useful. I believe. Yeah. Okay, guys. So uh, let now oh, I, I need to send you the short link, of course. Let me short, short uh, this one. Yeah, done. So try to access this one and please confirm for me here if you can access this. <clears throat> So don't miss out. This is the next one, okay? The project management for civil construction. And yeah, I'm really happy with the result. We could manage to do this under four hours. <laughs> Balance sheet with two types of hierarchy. With this example, we calculated the profit and loss with deep dive in the measures with the cash flow here as well. Uh, I explained it to you that we can build with the transactions or with the real data from the bank and the values are not the same, okay? And I'm really happy with the results. So please confirm to me if the link worked and I will finish the session. <clears throat> Okay, excellent. It's opening. Okay, so you can explore and check by yourself the final dashboard. Guys, thank you very much. And I hope to see you next time. Okay. And oh, next month, we're going to have a free course as well. Another edition of the free course. Yes, Monica, don't know why. All right. For other people is working. Okay. Uh, yeah, but I will fixate the link later here in the in the description. You can come back later and try again with a different network. Okay. Thank you very much for everybody. And I see you next time. Next month, we have a new free training. Okay. Invite your colleagues, recommend to your friends. Uh, and that's, that's all. Uh, that's all for tonight. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye bye.